Hello and welcome to the Golden Trail World Series. The best trail running show is back and we are buzzing to bring you all of the action from the women's finale today in Italy. We are in Il Golfo del Isola and your commentators for today are Jess Rogers and I'm joined by the wonderful trail running expert that is David Hellard. And we're buzzing, aren't we, David? The, the, we are right at the start line where the runners are going to be passing by us five times today and the energy is electric. This is going to be an explosive start to the end of the season and it's been an incredible season so far. But you can see where we are in Nulli. It's, it's a beautiful little town and those mountains behind us, they're going to be running up them four times today. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a stellar lineup. We had the women's prologue yesterday. Uh, it two days ago which we're going to be going over in some more detail but before we do that let's uh let's have a look at this little teaser shall we welcome to italy for the grand final of the golden trail world series we've seen the best trail running battles on earth some they won and some they lost now it's time to find out who will be the champion of the series What a season it's been so far, David, hey? And, and you could see some of the faces who are going to be on display today. And um, we're going to be seeing the course shortly. But one of the big talking points of this race, Sophia and Judith, our two leaders, are, are absolutely locked in a battle at the top of the, uh, the table for first overall in the series. But surprisingly to a lot of people, Madalena Floria from Romania, she led in, in Sierra now, Sierra's now. She sadly got lost in Mammoth Lakes and she came to the prologue and she destroyed the field. She is our potential favorite for the race today. And that could really have a big impact on who wins this overall series. But let's look at uh, what the course has because they've designed this course specifically for good television watching. Instead of going right up to the top of a massive mountain with bad reception and we know the fast uphills will pull away, they've designed this course to go through the town with huge energy, but also to try and ensure that there are more battles between the athletes because with shorter climbs, it means it's going to be easier for our faster runners to try and hold on to the climbers. And that means throughout this race, the positions will be changing. You can see the, uh, the start line here. Yeah, we've got uh, Tabor Hemming there with husband Ian. Eli Hemming, and look at these beautiful shots of Nolly, which is where we're starting this finale. We're going to be looking at the course now, and it starts with a very fast lap of the town. I'm not sure how the cyclist who's filming this is going to take the turns. We then go out on a short 5k uphill. It's fairly technical up, 240 meters. Lap two is where our skillful runners are going to have to make a move. They've got 420 metres of climbing, but there's some treacherous downhills. Lap three, everyone's been told, is the faster runnable loop. I disagree. I think there are some very tight turns in here. It could be very hard not to crash out. And then there's a two kilometre, 120 metre climb to finish. And that will be a sprint for these runners. Yeah, it's a really exciting format, this finale. Very different. If uh, fans of the Golden Trail were tuning in last year, that was a big five-day extravaganza in Madeira. We do one of those every other year. This year, it's obviously condensed. It's shorter. And let's look at what has happened so far. So back in May, the season kicked off in Zagama. Then it was the Marathon de Mont Blanc in June. Then the Dolomiths run in July in Italy. The 12th of August saw us go to Switzerland for the famous Sierra Zanal. Then it was over to America most recently for Pikes Peak and Mammoth Trail. And now we are in Il Golfo de Isola for the grand final. And it's going to be so exciting, this race. I mean, we've been, we've been here for a few days, haven't we, David? Leading up to this, the women's, the women's field this year has been absolutely packed and it really is set to be a show stopper today particularly for that first, second and third place. And, and just so you understand how this series works, you'll see our winners here. These are the, the six races pre-season. 
and your three best race points count towards the final. So we can see Daniela um, in Zagama, a very wet technical course. She triumphed there. Sophia, for her first race of the season, destroyed the field in Mont Blanc. That's a full marathon, very fast. Judith Weider, five times world orienteering champion. She returned from a, a layoff, a long-term injury to win a very short technical Dolomis run. Sophia in Sierra Zanau, where road meets trail, um, was, f for many people, not necessarily the favourite for that, but she showed that she not only had the distance, but the speed. Pikes Peak Ascent, that's 2,000 metres of climbing in America, and then Judith won in Mammoth Lakes to create this final where the, there's only 12 points, so 24 points between them. And basically, whoever wins today is going to win the series between those two. And Madeline Free is the person who, who can upset that. But let's look at our top 10. Yeah, so this is the top 10, and it's just 18 points between first and second here. So we've got Sophia Lackley. She got a full 600 points before going into the prologue because she got 200 for each of her three wins. Then it's Judith. Then, uh, between third and 10th, it's really, it's anyone's game. We've got Marlon Osa there from Spain, 5-7-1 points. Sylvia Nordska, who... Um, it's, has been having a really good season but she's she is a little bit quiet so she could really surprise us today and get a great performance and then Madalena Floria all eyes are going to be on her today because she had an epic prologue winning that um, and I can't wait to see what she puts out today then we've got Miao Yao from China in at 6th Therese Leboeuf in 7th Elise Ponset in 8th Julia Font Gomez in ninth, and Daniela Omis she won the first race of the Golden Trail this year and she may win here today I have to say this women's field is really something special and gosh I mean it is between Sophia and Judith up there for first and second place as we see only 18 points in it but then the real battle and the real question is who's going to get third and and the the challenge with this course is with the four separate loops some of them are technical some of them are faster and so amongst that top 10 some of these people are, are someone like Marlene Osa is very skilled. She's from um, she's from the Basque region of Spain, and so she knows that if she wants to use her her talent and actually try and um, get ahead of her rivals, she's going to have to try and deploy that on lap one and lap two, which is very tough in a race to be having to basically go into the red zone right from the start. There are runners like Miao Yao who typically start extremely quickly. And in a short course like this, we saw in Mont Blanc, she led out. We'd expect her to do something similar here. And Sophia has been showing herself to be a great climber, but also to have a good, a good trail speed in the smoother sections. The question for her, and I know she's nervous about this, is whether this course is going to give her enough opportunities to be able to actually get into her stride and into her pace because Judith is known but Judith and Elise are both here they are the best two descenders on earth bar none there's no there's no doubt in that they're so fast that on lap two and lap three everyone's gonna be scared about those two tearing through the field and if they're not ahead and Judith's leg is holding up there will be huge changes in the overall positions. Yeah, we should just mention about her legs. So the prologue was two days ago. It was on Thursday and basically it was about an 8k course here. It started um, a couple of miles down the road here, uh, not in Oli, but in Sportono. And it was a time trial. Uh, all the women set off at one minute intervals and whoever, you know, got the fastest time basically got those points. And there was 100 points up, to gra up for grabs in that prologue. I'm sure we'll talk more about it. But yeah, Judith had a bit of a fool on that. And she was bleeding as she came over the finish line. She still finished very very strong. She came second. No, she came third. Um, but, it, uh, you know, her leg did look in quite bad and she's been a bit stiff the last couple of days. So we need to see how her leg is holding out. And, and we, we've spoken to her. We spoke to Gabrielle, her husband, who um, often tips us off on, on what Judith's actually feeling because she, she's obviously playing the game a little bit. It's going to be tricky for her to, to stay in that front group because 
I, with the, the damage she's got to her leg, um, it, she, her leg will need time to warm up. So she'll, she'd been out already trying to get ready for this. But if she's not on race pace to begin with, it can be very hard to come from behind. Some of these uphills are extremely tight, single track. And so there aren't necessarily great opportunities to overtake on lap two or lap three up that hill. So if she gets off to a slower start because of the leg, even if she has the opportunity to warm it up and can attack in full race mode, she might not be able to get herself in a, into a position to be in touch with the leaders because of this single track and because they will be going off so quickly. But we can see our starting lineup here and um, everyone looks pretty relaxed actually. We've got Ayana and Miao Yao at the front there. They were battling for third and fourth in Mont Blanc earlier this year. In the yellow shorts, we have Sylvia Nortega from Norway. She has got top five in her mind. She knows that Marlin is ahead of her and actually that Madalena Floria is likely to beat her today and win big points and to take those top five positions. And... Um, when and so if we look around also we've got um, some some new runners as well who haven't necessarily done the whole series like malia strander just behind who did very well in our so alia strander from uh, america we have Tabor hemming there and sara alonso who won mont blanc two years ago she had a long injury and she is returning she's not quite in peak sara form but knowing how she runs she'll be going full gas and her mind will drag her body through this course yeah some big smiles though on that on that side look judith looking quite relaxed meow yow looking very focused in the white cap sophia lockley in those big sunglasses behind we always say they they're too big for her head don't we <laughs> <laughs> sophia she's looking focused sophia um sylvia there you can see it's a very tall figure compared to a lot of the other athletes and oh you can feel the tension madalena on the right hand side there what are these athletes going to put out today? And well, we are very lucky to be in the beautiful region here in northern Italy. Uh, it's four municipalities that have come together to present this amazing Golden Trail World Series final. Uh, in Bergeggi, Noli, Sportono and Vesi Portio are the four municipalities that have come together. We have been based in Noli and you can see it's a medieval town but it's right on the seafront as well. Very popular in the summer months but also really great this region for mountain biking, of course trail running and it just goes to show that it is not just a summer location. It's so much more. Uh, you can come in autumn, spring and you get a bit of culture, you get amazing coffee shops, you get amazing wine but also you get the mountains and the sea. We love it, don't we, David? We do, and I'm, um, I love the fact that there was a, uh, a Swiss soldier there, um, <laughs> a little bit lost from Rome. But we, the last two days haven't been looking like this. The trail is actually quite wet. Thankfully, today it looks like it's drying out a bit, but we expect some of these trails to be quite slippery. And even running through the town, there is a bit of moisture in the air and there's, there's, the start will be fast and there's some tight turns. So we'll get a sense of, of, of who's feeling confident on their feet because shoe selection could actually change the race results today. Yeah, absolutely. Very good point, David. I mean, it looks like a lovely Italian autumn day today, but let us tell you, it's been torrential rain. Uh, I personally went out and kind of ran slash walked some of the course yesterday and I was caught in an absolute thunderstorm. So it will be a bit wet and slippy underfoot, that is for sure. But I'm sure all of these athletes, nice little smile there from uh, Sophia Luckley. Um, they're going to be very happy that it's not torrential rain today and the wind isn't isn't strong either so really good running conditions i i judith looked quite nervous there i i'd say she normally she normally looks a bit more relaxed on the start line than that um i hope that isn't a sign that she she knows that her leg isn't quite ready somebody we haven't mentioned as well is arna gibson um second from the right there she's a, a a very fast 1500 meter runner sponsored for track and for trail she appeared her first race in pikes peak where she came third so she's very good um at altitude not a factor today but she's also good at smooth climbing so we're going to find out really whether she's able to, to transfer that speed into trail. Because in the prologue, she was not top 10. For me, that was quite disappointing. Speaking to the team, they said she's waiting for today to really show her ability. So this will be a good indication 
if she's got the technical skill. But here we go. It's the start of the final of the Golden Trail Series. And uh, they're, already, they're already streaking out ahead. That does look like Meow Yao right at the front. She does this every time. She always pays for it. We hope that she can hold on today. <laughs> yeah, we do love seeing her go out. And uh, it is a common story um, uh, throughout this series. Just look at that view, though. Palm trees. We've got the sea. Um, and yeah, it looks like they're setting a really good pace. That's uh, Sylvia Norse got there in the yellow shorts and one uh, runner we haven't spoken about is this lady oh yana cortaza she is she's now in her 40s fantastic runner she's won the gamut twice before and this year is having a the season of the last decade she's she's showing that actually with with good race experience and um, focusing on the right races you can perform at the highest level but we can we can see on the right there madalina was in a, a good position she has a 1 11 half marathon time she's shown that she actually can run technical trail but she'll be trying to get an advantage in these smoother sections and you can see someone's pulling away there i i it wouldn't surprise me if that is madalina because at the um the time trial the prologue she was so much faster on the smoother sections and she knows that if she's going to win today she needs to build buffers when she can yeah let's talk a little bit about madalina floria she is a romanian athlete and um she wasn't necessarily a favorite to be in the top five for this season was she david but she's really led out and i think they're about to go go past us here we're in our commentary box at the moment gosh we're in such an exciting position we can see them out of the corner of our eye just running past and they're looking fast the atmosphere here in the town is just brilliant this medieval town of Nolly. but yes talking about madalina floria she likes to, to go out fast and here actually we can see it's judith and sophia and madalina is in the middle there She's sophia is on the left behind so um i was speaking to madalina yesterday about potential race strategy and she knows that the the end of lap three and the end of lap four she should be the fastest so this is a good sign that she's using a race head because if she can stick with the um, someone like Judith, who's a technical runner, use her to guide her on the downhills. She knows at the end she's likely to pull away, but she came to the Golden Trail. Um, so Sierra's now was her first race, and we hadn't seen her on trail before. It was her very first trail race. But one of her big issues is that she struggles to eat before races. She has stomach problems in races. She doesn't take nutrition on in the races. So we saw she was leading at the top of the first climb of Sierra's and now and ended up back in sixth, seventh because she didn't have the, the energy left to carry on running at her pace. It's shorter today. She has been working on her pre-race nutrition. So I know she's, um, she, before the prologue, she wasn't able to eat more than she does normally. So hopefully she'll be able to get it right today. But while she is the faster runner at the end of the trail, she is also the runner who's more likely to not have her nutrition spot on. So we won't know until that stage whether she'll be able to actually use the pace she has in her legs. Yeah, we really hope that she does. She is able to finish and that she has measured this right in terms of nutrition. She can keep going. But Sophia Lackley, um, USA, but also uh, part Norwegian. And she's a skier as well. You can see her in the red vest there, red shorts, uh, the, the dark sunglasses. She's going out with some intent here, isn't she? She often hangs back a little bit at the beginning um, and, and, you know, holds on to, to the back. Well, not the back, but, you know, holds on at the front instead of leading. But today it looks like she's going with intent. She is the, the current leader leader of the Golden Trail World Series and she is in this to win this. Well, they look, Ayana's up there. I mean, I, yeah. I love this because Ayana isn't someone who I'd put as being top five in this race. And uh, she's, she's clearly running the pace that sh she wants to, at the start, she's backing herself for this. Um, so the, the thing is about our tour, these athletes have spent a huge amount of time together. They were touring America for two weeks, spending every day eating all their meals together, sleeping in rooms. It's not like other tours. So these athletes actually know how the individuals are day to day. There's less secrets between them, which means it's very hard to actually hide if you're feeling tired or even what your race strategy is because they know each other through and through. So Sophia will be aware of Judith's leg injury. Um, she'll be constantly trying to test. And when we saw the race in um, Pikes Peak, Sophia took it out hard. Judith caught her on the climbs, which we didn't expect. And Sophia was then happy to sit on Judith's shoulder 
for 60 70 percent of that race knowing she can break at the end there's a difference in this race though because i don't know if sophia would back herself over, over against judith on the second and third lap so she has in the back of her mind that she needs to start pushing and pressuring judith to try and force her out of her comfort pace so that when Judith to those downhills, she hasn't got the energy and hasn't quite got the composure she'll need to be able to flow through them quickly. Now, we, uh, the screen is we're, we're going a mix of, of cycles, drones and runners today because to get on these small technical trails, you can't film the whole thing with just one of those. The, uh, there will be some single track coming where we have some high level orienteers and um, some runners who've competed in the Golden Trail themselves before because they're the only people quick enough to keep up with these ladies. Yeah, I think it's really important to talk about how we film here at the Golden Trail World Series, and it really is exceptional. At the moment, this is some drone footage you can see, but yeah, we have a mix of, of professional, ex-professional runners and cyclists taking to these routes. You can see you can see someone on a bike there uh, about you know 50 metres ahead of some of these runners, and they will have a series of GoPros, which are, are live sending the footage um, to what we're seeing now and i have to say it is the best running footage out there we get really up close and personal to the athletes that are able to just see every part of the race which isn't always the case across these very long trail running races and so we feel very lucky very privileged that we have got some amazing pictures to talk to haven't we david and at the moment this is the first incline of the first loop and yeah it is when we talk about flowers this is what we are calling these these small loops instead of a traditional trail running race like this where we'd have a one huge up kind of like at the marathon de mont blanc which we saw earlier this year but instead they're going to go up the mountain going to come back down then up again and down so it is a very different type of final and it's 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 new it's exciting for the town here because um everyone who's come out to watch has three chances well, actually five if you count the start and the finish. But they have multiple chances to see these athletes come back through the town, cheer them on. And that is also the, the main aid station. The only aid station is in the town where the athletes can refuel. And they come through it three times right past us here. So we're going to be up close and personal. And it's because of this flower loop. And it's not the same loop they're doing each time. It's different. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these athletes are going to be dealing with that in comparison to a kind of normal up and down race. And you can see through the trees, we can already spot that there are some groups forming together. And already it looks like Sylvia and um, I think Miao Yao are dropping off the pace slightly. At the front, we have um, Ayana, Judith, Sophia, and we also have Madalena in there. And the fact that grouping together is very significant for this course. Unlike the, the tall climbs that you'll get in some races, where a good uphill runner will pull away from the pack because it's a shorter uphill this one is only 240 meters of climbing it allows everyone to actually keep in touch with the leaders and psychologically it's so important to be able to just be on the shoulder of the running ahead of you because you share the pain of that intensity it's been shown in scientific studies that running with someone allows you to actually push through pain with less notice notable um, impact and so if you are someone like Judith um, if you're someone like um, Elise your intent will be to try and stick with the climbers for as long as you can because that then allows you to um, attack on the down but also just stay in touch with that pace at the front as, a, as someone who's not necessarily a good descender similarly you want to be in the same group because running by yourself downhill if you're not a good trail runner can be extremely taxing and draining mentally whereas if you can follow someone who is a, an expert you don't have to make the decisions of where the best place to run is you can tuck in a meter behind two meters behind and actually just carve the path they've fallen so that they've, they've created so all of these athletes will have that in mind and when someone starts to break off the back of these groups that is significant more so than in other races because i think the pace at the front won't change significantly and if you're off that pace it will be extremely hard to get back on that peloton yeah and we can see here they are running through the trees of nolly northern italy um it's 
and at the head of the race we have got a few runners kind of grouping together uh, and the fight overall is basically that Judith needs to beat Sophia and if she does come first if Judith wins this and Sophia comes second I believe they'd be joint on points overall which would be really something special and just look at that view I tell you what hasn't been like that the last few days it's quite a welcome relief to see this sun yeah absolutely and to, to give you a quick up update if you haven't if you haven't seen the, the details of the prologue so two days ago we had our prologue in first place was Madalena we've mentioned she's finished in 39 minutes and Sophia was almost 40 seconds so 30 seconds behind her so 37 seconds behind her which is a significant gap over such a short race so um, it, it shows you the speed of Madalena but potentially how much she committed to that prologue because she'd come into this final so frustrated having got lost in Mammoth she was leading at that stage so to not only have led out Sierras and now one of the biggest trail races in the world, but to have actually been leading a gun. Look at that view. Wow. I know. Just look at it. It really is an exceptional venue here in Nolly. Loving this footage. This will be a runner or, or a cyclist behind the head of the race. And we're, oh my God, we're just at the start here, David. Uh, we're, we're so excited to see how this one unfolds. But it might not look super fast to those who are watching, but we can tell you something. Yeah, this climbing. is. This is, this is quite a pace to be climbing this rather large hill. And it looks already as if the top 10 are starting to break. So whoever is at the front is, is clearly pushing the pace. And um, that, we, we can't, we're not sure exactly who it is yet, but we expect it to either be Sophia, Madalena or Judith. In terms of the prologue, we saw that Sophia um, caught, they started a minute apart based on their previous positions in the overall series. So um, Sophia started a minute behind Judith and caught her by the top of that climb. So she's shown she's in better climbing form. Judith, though, attacked back and before she fell, started to put significant distance over Sophia. So of these three, we know that um, on, based on current form, Madalena looks to be the best climber, not necessarily in some technical sections, then Sophia and Judith behind. Um, we know that Marlinosa as well, is. she comes from the Bass region and is, she has grown up with trail in her veins. So she's someone who can technically climb. And at the top of this first section, we're going to see some scrambles where people will actually have to climb on boulders. And if you're not comfortable with that, it could really slow you down. Yeah, absolutely. But we love seeing that as part of the Golden Trail World Series. Trail running is pretty extreme and some of that scrambling will absolutely demonstrate that later today. We can't quite see any runners on our screen at the moment, but we are at about kilometre four. Capo Noli, which is basically the top of, of this, this, this region that we're in, this little area. And I went up this yesterday and it was absolutely tremendous for rain. I can tell you, and it was slippy and it was narrow and it was very, very interesting to be running. And the town here, as we can see, they've really got behind the runners and the event. They've been so supportive in terms of the hospitality they've provided and the support to the runners. They're so excited to have the event here. And we're excited to be here for the first ever time. Golden Trail, we have been all over the world this year. Um, and we're also excited for what may come next year for 2024 Golden Trail World Series. But today is all about the finale. And if you're new to Golden Trail, well, as David said, we had the prologue of the women on Thursday, prologue of the men yesterday, which was a time trial and 100 points are up for grabs. Today is the women's finale. Tomorrow is the men's finale. And both of those races are worth 300 points. So that's why this finale is so important. Of course, it matters where you are in the overall rankings with your current points. We've got Sophia Luckley at 694 points, 694. Judith on 676. And then Marlon Osa at 571. But today, a whopping 300 points are up for grabs. So anything can happen and you really need to be in that top 10 uh, to, yeah, to be in the lead and to be top five overall. One of the big changes we've made this year to previous Golden Trails, we've always tried to ensure that we can give equal profile to the women's race and the men's. And that's really tricky when you have a race together. So in previous years, we sometimes had the women start 15 minutes before the men, so that, or half an hour before, so that the, the footage of them could be seen. 
often though that does actually impact on the race um because sometimes they start together and and so this is the front of our race now and it's it's no surprises here we've got sophia leading out madalina it looks like madalina is starting to make a bit of a move and judith just tucked in behind judith looks like she's flowing well actually um it's it's her right hand hip that she fell down on and well they've already changed positions in those 20 meters the three of them the fact that Judith feels comfortable in this position is a great sign that her leg isn't going to be a factor today. And if I was Sophia or Madalena, I would be fearful right now. I don't think Madalena knows Judith well enough to understand quite how good she is on that technical down. She's fought her in Mammoth Lakes where Madalena was using her 111 pace, her 111 half marathon pace, but that course was extremely smooth. It wasn't the technicality that we're going to see today. And what we don't know is how good Madalena is going to be able to perform going down technical trails because she's new to trail running this season. And if you're not practice on different types of terrain, it can be extremely hard at the paces they're moving at to try and keep your feet picking the right position without falling. And so um, Madalena needs to be, um, and, she, and part of this season is being on the shoulder of someone who is better than you because you, you begin to learn. This is a newer runner who we're not expect, expecting to see here. This is someone from the from the national series as well. and. Yeah, let's talk about the Golden Trail National Series um, but th but uh, in a second. But these three, it is a three-horse race at the moment. And I love seeing these three up front because in previous Golden Trail World Series events, it's often been two runners battling it out. I'm really loving seeing these three together. Definitely easy to be on the show. Oh, you can see one of the camera runners there just scrambling up the hill. They're at the top of Cap Nolly at the moment. And what a beautiful day it is. But yeah, we have got Judith there in the headband and the blue top leading out. She is currently sitting second overall then it is madalina floria from romania and then it's sophia lackley and just to say it's those three who also were the top three in the prologue that is sophia nordska um that is sylvia nordska in the yellow shorts there oh and sarah alonso in the in the crop top and then we have oana after that they're really not far behind but yeah these three judith leading out and yeah they haven't competed much against each other directly at the moment judith and madalena and so it's just going to be so interesting to see what happens on the descent and if judith is going to be able to make some ground there and in, ad in addition it, th that is not caitlin fielder sadly caitlin has uh covid and, is, and, and could not make these finals um we love you caitlin the national series we've mentioned it a little bit as well so we, we, we're now coming back this is like meow, meow yao leading the chasing pack um and wow heavily strapped up she had strapping similar um in in sierra's and oh, as look well at this um, scrambling and climbing look how narrow it is as well poles are not allowed on this route um we should say that running poles um aren't permitted because of how narrow it is so you won't see any runners with those today and yet yeah, judith just showing her prowess there and making it look so easy and on the right hand side i think this is alicia vaggy um who is an incredible runner a, a, a former olympian who has had um took some time off running to have children and has now returned to professional um, sport and and this season has has done incredibly well we didn't we didn't know who she was um, well we didn't know she was gonna be running trail this season and she came to America and top 10 in Pikes Peak and in Mammoth Lakes and so now has earned her place in the final but look at this scramble and, and this is what we mean by it's gonna be hard to overtake and you this is very draining as well. It's not just the fact that it slows you down. A lot of runners who transition to trail, and that is Marlin. She, mm. she loves trail like this and terrain like this. It's not just the fact that you um, you might not be used to how to move quickly, but actually, if you were a road runner, someone like Madalena, who comes across into trail, you've only run in one position, and so you haven't built the the leg strength in your knees and and also in your your thighs and and elements of having your tendons and the the sinew between them being strengthened so that when you're having to move in all these different directions that could be extremely tiring and if you're just if you just come in with road runners legs the fact that we have four downhills significant downhills in this and these different so you can see there the overtakes of um 
of, of someone just feeling far more confident in this terrain. But that will start to catch up with you if you are not conditioned towards this. Sophia is also an Olympic skier. She has been trying to train dual this season. She's been doing a lot of um, ski mountaineering. She's been a busy lady. And yeah, this is the chasing group here. And you can see, oh There's yeah, Alice American, Stranda. that's early. Alice, Alice. Stranda, Elise Ponset. Some very strong runners in this leading group. And they're just going to try and hang on in this one and then make their move in a bit. Um, and yeah, this is Sophia we see the back of here in, in the red vest. Um, and then it is Madalena in second, and it's Judith Vida of, uh, of Switzerland leading. And I have to say, I think Madalena's going to be quite happy that she's following, yeah. um, following Judith down. It's also, we were talking about, it's, it's obviously tiring going up and scrambling. It uses a different headspace, but if you're following someone, they're kind of picking the route for you, aren't they? So you don't really have to think about it quite as much. It, it makes it so much easier. And... Sophia coming into this has been worried that she's been cross training using the mileage of her, her ski training and combining that with some running. The trouble is in a race like this that's so technical with four downhills, it beats your legs up. And if you haven't been racing enough or if you haven't put enough mileage of down trails into your legs, then by the end of this race, it could be extremely painful to run quickly downhill. And so she is somewhat nervous of being able to, um, to make it to the end, running at her potential pace that she'd expect at the beginning. But you can see a, a camera runner there. That was, uh, that was Anna Kufa, who competed in the Golden Trail two years ago and was the downhill queen in our finals uh, three years ago. Shows you that the level that you have to be to try and keep up with these. But this is at least Ponset. Um, for many people, until Judith returns, the best descender in the world. But actually, with, with Judith's top pace, um, we we think Judith is probably better now. And that was a national series runner there. That was Eve Van Dongen from um, from Scandinavia. The national series is. We've got the Golden Trail World Series. This is the finals here. But the, the runners who've done well in the National Series are now coming to take part in the same race. There were races in 20 countries across the world. And if you were in the top three of those races, you then qualify to come to these finals. So this is the opportunity for someone who hasn't necessarily become a professional athlete or made it on the world stage to actually show how good you are. And if you top 10... Here today, you're invited back to the series next year. So they'll be running, thinking this is my opportunity. To, that's Arna Gibson there looking looking good, actually, looking fast on these trails. They'll be running knowing that not only are they running for potential sponsors, but funding for coming on the series next year, which could catapult their season and change the course of their, their athletic career. That's Bill from, uh, from Spain filming Marlin, filming his athlete for Salomon there. Interestingly, though, Madalena Faria doesn't have a sponsor at all. Yeah, so it just goes to show this is really big deal for her. Uh, most of these, obviously, the, the top 10, top 20, top 30, we've got the top 30 best Golden Trail World Series runners here, and that's and it's the top 30 that qualify for this final. And but basically, all of them, David, they'll have sponsors, whether that be Hocker, Red Bull, Salomon, and, and Madeline doesn't currently have an overall sponsor. So it's really important for her to, to stamp her authority as an absolute queen, an elite runner here in Italy to be able to get that sponsor and be able to really do this full time and really commit to it and unlock some more potential because she's clearly unbelievably talented and just you know having that extra support will just take her to the next level yeah and, and at the end of the season typically the all of the sponsors will wait until they've seen the results and then decide if they're going to renew contracts but also how much funding the athletes will get and then setting targets of which races they'll score um, that, they'll, that they win or top five in that they then get additional funding and price spot prizes for so Madalena knows that a win today will completely change the traje trajectory of her career because if everyone knows she's beaten Sophia and Judith and won the Golden Trail, this could be tens of thousands of pounds difference in her contract. Um, but even the, the, having a range of, of contracts and, and being able to go to any brand on earth and saying, do you want me as a runner? It's not just the funding though, because if you're part of a sponsored team, 
you get to travel with the other athletes. They look after your accommodation. They do food together. They train together in training camps. They're shared information. And it, it all these little extras here, Norskar here, and I believe that's Sarah, Sarah Alonso mm -hmm. tucked in behind her. So we expect them to be in third, fourth, fifth, sixth position overall. But we do have an update coming through of the overall splits. Which is great. And yeah, Sarah Alonso, if you are a big fan of the Golden Trail World Series, and if you're watching on YouTube right now, all, all likelihood is that you are. So you'll be familiar with Sarah Alonso from previous seasons, but she hasn't raced all of the season because of an injury. But it's so great to see her back on the trails and smiling. She really is a fan favourite. And here we go. Here are the first splits. Well, I mean, and I would say we need to uh, take a... Take a, a pinch of salt with some of these and also some of the names aren't, aren't great it's Madalena it is not Mor Monica we've we learned that in the first race of the season <laughs> but um, if you didn't have time to see that in first with Judith Weider from Switzerland second was Madalena Faria from Romania third was Sofia Lockler from the USA um, in fourth wow from Sweden it's Eve van Dongen she did well in our prologue she's from the national series this is a great performance from her we're seeing currently Sylvia Nordska from Norway and um, it's saying Ayana Cortazar from Spain, but that is, that is certainly not Ayana. That that is Sara Alonso. So I don't know what's happening to her chip timer because it's not coming up. Next is uh, Alice Gaggi from uh, Italy. Miao Yao in eighth or ninth from China. Then we have uh, Emilia Robsham, another Scandinavian national trail series, and Julia Font from Spain. The chips aren't always correct, though, and we, we're here to interpret what we're seeing. So that looks more like Sylvia and Sara Alonso, who will be racing for sixth and seventh currently. Significantly, though, is someone who is missing. Sylvia has been in a battle with Marlon Osa and, and Marlon has had real issues with um, cramps in the prologue. She started today very concerned whether it was going to kick in. To, uh, kick in. Killian Journey had similar issues. That it, it, It's such a rare... Um, it's linked to your nutrition and it's something that is very unpredictable and it just stops you being able to move your muscles. Not like normal cramp, you almost turn into the tin man. The fact that she's not in this top 10 now is, is really concerning about her ability to be able to, to run through this race. But she knows she needs to finish this race and at least score some points to stay in that top 10 to be able to get the funding and, and the, the, the sponsorship for, for next year to come on this race. It's a lot to think about. Talking about the, the sponsorship opportunities for Madalena, I mean, we hope that she's not concerned with that today, but it, it will be in the back of your mind. Like, you know, to do well here, is, it's about your future running career as well. And talking about that top 10, it is really coveted to then be covered for what comes next in the Golden Trail. And at the Golden Trail World Series, it really is the best trail running races around the world with the best runners. Should we talk about how they're looking at the moment, how relaxed they are? Judith, a bit taller than the other two runners here at the front. Lovely long strides, looking quite relaxed. That leg yeah. doesn't look like it's causing her too many issues. Oh, Sarah Alonso, I love watching uh, the Spaniard Sarah Alonso descend. She is. Um, she was there in the crop top next to Sylvia, who was in the yellow shorts. And Sylvia is a very tall runner herself. But yeah, let's talk about um, their they, relaxed nature at the moment. Th no one seems to be stressed too much. And actually, Judith is looking very, very composed. Based on this, this top three at the moment, I would expect that either Judith tries to attack on the second downhill um, and, and lose them, or if she doesn't, I think if Judith can't shake off Madalena, at the moment, Madalena is looking very composed and has the pace to be able to drop it at the end. So if I was Sophia, I would be concerned because I, do, I wouldn't know what to do right now. I don't know when Sophia can attack and win this. She knows she's not as quick as Madalena in the flat sections. She knows she's not as good as Judith on the downhill. So the question is, is Sophia going to risk blowing up by attacking on this uphill or attacking on the lap three? Yeah, it's a very good question. And just, just for a reminder for people who are watching, it's five laps. Um, and here, what's really good is that Sarah Alonso and Sylvia Norska are alongside each other in that group, that following group. And that's going to be really helpful for them. They're going to try and stay together for as long as possible. Um, and it really is. We've got some of the runners going past us now.
We're here in Nully for the Golden Trail World Series final. We're half an hour into the race now and our athletes have just literally just ran past my tent so you might hear the energy in the background. This is our overall standing in the series so far. Yeah, absolutely. We have got Sophia Lackley, who is leading the overall. Judith Wider from Switzerland in second. Marlon Osa. If you can hear some background noise, because myself, Jess Rogers, and my wonderful co-commentator, David Hellard, are in the commentary box for you today, and we are in the thick of it in northern Italy, in Nolly, for this Golden Trail World Series final. We do a quick reason quick recap of this last half an hour to bring you up to speed. That's Sophia and Judith, the Having two such leaders a in the moment. series. That's a really nice moment. I hadn't seen that before. But as we expected, the three favourites for today have taken it out fast. We have Madalena Faria from, um, from Romania. She's got a 1.11 half marathon time. She won the prologue two days ago and has shown she's got some real ability on courses like this. She is locked in a battle with Judith Weider, five times world orienteering champion, Golden Trail World Series winner of 2019. This is Judith we're seeing now, and Sophia Lockley, current leader of the overall series, second last year. All three of them are running together. It's a five lap course. They've just finished the, the first lap, which is the energy you can hear behind us. And we're now watching fourth and fifth this is Sophia Alonso, uh, sorry, Sara Alonso from uh, the Basque region of Spain and Silvia Nordskar. Um, we're going to see battles throughout the course of today because the lap course means that the people who are good at climbing won't be able to put too much of a gap. But lap two, you're joining for, for us now, is the most technical one. This is the one where they're could be falls, but we're really going to be able to see the talent of some of these ladies. Yeah, this is the Golden Trail World Series, and this is the women's finale. To give those people at home who are, who are not used to how this works, basically, there were six races in the general Golden Trail World Series, and then the top 30 athletes uh, with points from those series have, are here in Northern Italy for the finale. And two days ago, it was the prologue which means it was a time trial race. So all the female athletes that you see today had to do an eight kilometer time trial in this region of Italy. Uh, we are currently in Nolli, uh, but the prologue took place in Sportona and athletes set off at one minute intervals and a hundred points was up for grabs then. So they had a day to recover. We are now Saturday 21st of October. It's the finale for the females and it, is a, it was a mass start race and 300 points are up for grabs. And why that's so important is because all other Golden Trail World Series races have been worth 200 points. And at the top of the leaderboard, you've got Sophia, who is in the red vest here at the, at the back of the leading three. She is leading the Golden Trail World Series at the moment with 694 points. And in second place is the tall figure of Judith Vida, who is in the, is the, in the headband, who we'll see again in a second. She is only 18 points behind Sophia. And so, if Judith wins today and Sophia comes second, it would be a tie. But as the rules have it, Sophia would still win overall. And then in third place in the overall rankings is a very young Spaniard, Marlin Osa. And then we've got Sylvia Nordska in fourth and Madalena Floria in fifth. But anyway, we'll talk more about that overall. But at the moment, we have got a Golden Trail National Series runner here chasing, which is slightly unusual. Yeah, absolutely. This is a great performance. This is Eve van Dongen from the Netherlands. We have the National Trail Series represented here as well so if you are one of the top three from your country in the, the localized races you also come into the final but we wouldn't expect someone to come in top five necessarily because of the standard is so high so um we hope that she hasn't got out too fast you can see her here um we believe this is Eve van dongle in terms of the races she's run before we're going to do a quick check on her um yeah. Because we, we know there have been some Dutch trail runners in the past. Nienke Brinkman, who won the series last year, um, Dutch as well. But it's not very usual because the Netherlands doesn't really have any mountains. Let, well, it doesn't really have any hills, really flat, let alone it, mountains. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll be able to find out in this, in this lap 
whether she's got the technical ability or if she's been using her, her pace. Yeah, and she's about 50 seconds behind this leading group here. And uh, for those who are not familiar with the Golden Trail World Series, uh, these runners travel the world with it. Oh, and the way that we film Golden Trail is one of the most unique and exciting things as well. You will see some of the best footage from trail running events anywhere here on the Golden Trail World Series. We have a series of professional runners who run behind and in front with GoPros as well as professional cyclists and you can see how narrow these routes are. We also have a lot of drones and they send the footage directly to your screen. Now granted we can't see any runners on the screen right now but it's really important to, for you guys at home to know how this is filmed because it's really special. It's really unique to be able to bring you the best trail running show. So um, the fact that we're just seeing trail now probably means that our runner has been dropped by the women. That, And if you consider that the athletes on trail today uh, who are filming, they have competed in the national series of gone, and we're back with our leaders now. So there's still three of them locked together. And we saw, oh, it, Ooh, looks, it yeah. looks like Madeline has made a bit of a move. Interesting. This is single track. Um, so this is judith could potentially be oh she's oh. a different oh, oh no, no. Okay. okay we've had a and this is one of the challenges if being a professional athlete allows you to come to trail earlier and have a have a look you can see there were those flags hanging down from the the side of the trees Th that is what they're chasing to today but there are 50 volunteers out on the course local volunteers have come out to try and help direct people to try and ensure that everyone goes the right way and you can see like 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 Eve is this is steep now this is hard to run the fact that she's having to power hike instead is because of how steep it is if you saw this from the side profile you'd understand why We've done a, a bit of research on, on this run. We're moving back to our, our top three. So for someone like Madalena, when you make a move and you put a gap in and you suddenly lose it because you've taken a wrong step, it's, it's very, it, it really impacts your, how you feel mentally. Sometimes you can get an adrenaline boost, which pushes you on. But other times, it, it's almost as if you, you've taken a bit of a punch from the race course. But you know what was good there, David? She did go slightly the wrong way, but she rectified it very quickly. So she'll probably just be feeling quite a lot she, of relief that it wasn't worse. Again. Yeah, she's I know. attacked again. And the fact that Sophia's not gone with her, uh, th this surprises me. She's dropping off Judith as well. Judith is trying to stick with her. And, and this is where the course plays an impact mm. in other races we've seen mammoth lakes or similar something like pikes peak there's so much climbing in one go that if you're a better climber and you attack hard you can drop someone get out of sight and as soon as you're not in someone's sight it becomes very demoralizing and they lose your pace they no longer know where you are it's very hard to do that on today's course even though you can see it's very tight and narrow and there's lots of switchbacks the fact that they know this climb is only 300 meters, there's a steep downhill, then there's another 120 meter climb. These runners will be thinking, just hold on for four more minutes, three more minutes, two more minutes, just hold on so that they can keep the elasticity between them and then attack back on the down. I think it's definitely worth saying that this is very different from a lot of the other Golden Trail World Series races. So all of the Golden Trail World Series races, they are between 20 and 40K or thereabouts, um, really bringing together the best trail running races in the world. But so often, like the Marathon de Mont Blanc, you have a very long incline up and Sierras are now in Switzerland. And so that is where somewhere like Sophia, who is in the red vest, um, the, the US say Nordic athlete because she's also an Olympic skier that's where she does really well that's why this where there's five loops of a different type of course can really play into it differently and we're going to really see different people adjusting to this in different ways and it really you know we're not gonna we don't know how they're gonna react because this isn't the usual way that they race and the views you're seeing now we are about two and a half hours uh, south of Milan we are in northern Italy um, in Noli is the start and finish very quaint medieval town super busy in the summer with low of tourists coming for the, for the lovely stretch of coastline on the Mediterranean Sea um, and they have been so welcoming we are having a great time here it's the first time that the Golden Trail World Series has come to this region and it may well not be the last and actually when the when the Golden Trail 
concept was first created, the idea of bringing together the most exciting and historic trail races in the world. The, uh, the organizer of the Dolomis Run is from here and he's been lobbying Greg, the racer, the, the overall director of the Golden Trail to say, why don't you do a race in my backyard? It's beautiful, there's incredible trails. And so they've had time to actually develop the structure of this race. A, a quick apology, if, if he's in fourth, is actually from Sweden, it appears on the screen, even though um, the ITRA points say that she's from the Netherlands, which makes a lot more. She's been running some uh, some races in um, in Norway and, and Sweden so far. She won the uh, the Fall Marathon Vecken Salomon 26K uh, last year. But we're back with our race leaders, and um, they're now down to two. So does this mean that Madeline has dropped them? And I think Madeline is ahead. Yeah, that would be that would be my guess from what we last saw. But you never know. She might have taken a wrong turning. We don't know. But we hope that she is ahead of that camera runner that you can see in the in the white t-shirt there. And what this probably means is that the camera runner camera runner cannot keep up with Madeline. So you'll see there will be different cameras on the course. Some of them will go will be GoPros, and these are our fast runners. There are also some of our general media team who have very high quality cameras which will be used for Chasing Dreams, the overall series, and our, our, our summary of the race afterwards. But we're now back with Sara Alonso. We believe her to be in fifth place, which is a great position for her. She's only come back from a long-term injury, long-term hip injury this season. And uh, we know that she can push through pain, but she's looking smooth here. And, and, and she's someone who I expect, if any of these top three go out too hard and blow up, she will be closing in on them towards the end. Mm, but it's surprising not to see Sylvia Nordskog with her then, because they, they've been they've been tied to the hip for the, the first 35 minutes of this race, but now we're in at 41 minutes. Uh, we're, we're not sure what's happened to Sylvia, but we will find out soon. And also, Madalina from Romania. She is not as well known as these other athletes, uh, and so she has surprised everyone on this Golden Trail World Series. But yeah, Sara Alonso, if you are new to trail running, um, Sara is, is a big name in these parts and she uh, has featured heavily in the wonderful series um, that has been on YouTube over the last couple of years called Chasing Dreams which follows these amazing Golden Trail World Series races around the world. She's a great personality, really brilliant to see her back on the trail. She's looking so smooth and the thing with Sara, uh, the Spaniard, is that she's got nothing to lose on this because she's not really in contention for that for that top three so she's going to be enjoying this getting back to full fitness enjoying the views enjoying running again um which is really brilliant and and in the um her parents have come as a surprise to cheer her on today so they're going to be halfway through i know that she this is a friend of her she went to university with who was filming her purely for um her, her sponsor asics they've asked if they can create a documentary about her but in her off season when she wasn't able to, to run she started cycling she actually beat some Tour de France cyclists from Spain in races, um, local in, uh, in the Basque region. And so that allowed her to get her lungs ready. Her nickname when she was a football player in her youth was Lungs because she could run so much. So she's someone who is extremely um, knowledgeable about her, her about the statistics, about her heart rate and about what pace she can push. So she will have, she will have thought in advance exactly what um, intensity she'll be attacking each of these hills. So she is someone who I know can push through her, her physical barriers. Not only that, she will know how to pace this race to perfection. And this is trail exactly like the Bass region by Zagama. So this is somewhere she'll feel very comfortable. But we, we are currently with, we think, second, and that was second and third place battling it out uh, with Sara Alonso behind we, uh, we will be showing the footage that our camera runners can show. No, we, we talked about Madalina Faria. She, she has been Romanian champion on the track before. She's got a 5K time of 15.38, a 10K time of 32.55. And this year she took to trail and came sixth in the World Champs, 14K. But every race she's done this season, she's dramatically improved in previous performances. She's learning about her nutrition and also how to actually pace a race properly because if you're coming from a road race into something like trail like this you don't understand how much the downs and the ups can take out of your legs and so it changes how fast you can run towards the end but also until your legs have and the muscles have adapted you won't be able to take the pace and the uh, the, the brutal 
response that you get from trails like this. We have got an update though. We have had a couple of elite runners drop out already. Therese Leboeuf and Daniela Omus unfortunately have dropped out, we have been told. We don't know why. Uh, we hope they're okay. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, trail running at this level, they really are the most gnarly elite trail runners out there and these are not easy courses and, and i mean that's super super sad to hear um dan i know daniela has been struggling with illness this week she caught from her daughter and uh and and that's one of the the real challenges with with trying to be a professional athlete and trying to to balance family life as well is um you go on tour with people we saw when the american trip a lot of our athletes caught covid um, we've had, we, we've we've seen at the, the finals last year, um, Danny Marino drank the local tap water and ended up on a drip because of it. And it's oh. so hard to get things right. Yeah, but really, really great that we've got so many mothers who are competing. And I'm just loving seeing this. A big advocate of women competing after having children. And Judith has got two children. And Judith is currently uh, in second place in this race and second place in the Golden Trail overall. We've still got um, we've still got Madalena Floria of Romania leading the race. Can't see her just yet. On your screen right now is Sara Alonso of Spain, who's looking very calm. But yeah, being able to have a child and come back to such peak fitness is really incredible and it's how it should be and it's amazing that these competitions are enabling that however it is definitely difficult to be traveling the world and also being a mother and having a family which is why as you said david that so many of those athletes that maybe didn't travel to the usa recently to compete in those ones but if you're based in europe and we've got quite a lot of the golden trail world series races in europe this year it means that you can still compete and be a mother and we just love to see it now madalina has built a 15 second lead over judith and sophia that seems a lot and actually significantly for the up they won't be able to see her but 15 seconds is not enough for the downhill judith will pull her back one of the question marks on Judith, though, we, we've spoken about one of the challenges of being a mother. When Judith um, had her, her second daughter, she, she actually had a stroke on the left-hand side of her body, um, which really impaired her ability to, to move freely, let alone to run. She struggled these last two years um, to come back to full fitness. We saw um, two years ago when she, Sierra's and Al, she crashed out with a hip injury, probably linked. And so to see her this year, performing at the highest level she was second in the world championships in the uh, the 40k she won the dolomis run um, with a very skillful downhill technical descent and so she's shown that even if um we do know she doesn't have perfect vision in her left eye which has affected her ability to pick the trail quite as well as she used to but we saw in the dolomis run even with a not 100 percent visioned Judith, she is still significantly better than anyone else in the world at downhill. Yeah, absolutely. Goodness me. I mean, everyone should be absolutely terrified of, of a f absolutely fully vision-focused Judith, but it's just incredible to see these athletes come back, and it shows the mental strength you need as well. And just to give everyone an update, I mean, you can see the, the crowds and the fans here in Nolly in northern Italy. They're loving it. The atmosphere is really brilliant, but in terms of the... Uh, they've all got their Golden Trail World Series cowbell, the noise when they come through our area here is just brilliant and your leader at the moment of this women's finale is Madalena Floria and this is the second pack in second there is the tall figure of Judith with the headband in third it's Sophia Luckley of the USA and then in fourth it's Eve, who is a Golden Trail National Series runner and it's Sarah Alonso in fifth and Sylvia Norska of Norway in six. That's now, your top. That's your top six. Now we can't see. We couldn't see Madalena there, which that will be playing in the minds of Judith and Sophia, because they will want to see her as soon as possible, just so they know they get a sense of of how much distance she's put in them. When they come down to the aid station, back through the town, they will have their spies um, updating them on the race splits. But she's put more distance into them than clearly. It's 15 seconds, the last checkpoint we were told. But the fact now she um, she's not in sight, she must be pushing the oh, pace. That's her there, I think, just steaming down the other side. Oh, so on the switchback. Yeah. And this isn't the technical section, which is to come. But this race is going to erupt in the next lap. Stay tuned.
Madalena Florian there, her arm slightly flailing on the way down. It's kind of important to say that Madalena has been leading other races in the Golden Trail Winters, but she hasn't been able to sustain it all the way through. And we're really hoping that, that she can do that today uh, because she had a disappointing time in the USA recently where she was leading the race. But unfortunately, she went off track, she got lost, and she came in third. And did you see just there how she's having to jump over these rocks? Her arm, when the arms go left and right, that's for counterbalance. And you can see, this is, a, this is it's not the most technical part of the course, but you get a sense of how different this is to road running. Because through all of those, you have to be making decisions. And if you're not someone who's naturally um, used to just flowing through the course, or you haven't had time to come and see the course in advance, then you're going to have to break more. And that break is putting force through your quads. The more tired your quads at this stage, it becomes very painful to start running downhill. And so if she gets too beaten up on these downhills, by the time we get to that, the faster third and fourth lap, her legs will be too tired to actually be able to use the speed she's got. And we can see now that, again, they're having to jump around quite a bit to be able to flow through this downhill. It really is a beautiful region here though, and beautiful beautiful setting as we see Madalena fly down there she's a Romanian athlete she's not currently sponsored um, so she will be hoping to put in a great performance here and be hopefully I mean I think she's now vying for that third place overall in the Golden Trail World Series uh, it, we should point out that Sophia and Judith um, there's only 18 points between them overall of the season so it's very likely that they will be coming first and second because then it is almost a hundred points until Marlon Osa who's sitting in third in the overall rankings. But if Madalena Floria comes in, in first here, then she very well likely will, uh, will get that third spot and it will mean a lot to her. She's such a smiley person um, uh, on the tour generally and she's got so much ahead of her in terms of trail running. She is a very strong 5K, 10K track and road runner. And so this is this is different for her, but my goodness, what an introduction to trail running. And if anyone is new to trail running, this is what it looks like. This is why it's great, and this is why we love it. And significantly, Judith hasn't caught up in that short downhill. This, this second lap has two uphills in it. So we've done the first downhill. She's now got a 120 meter climb. Um, up these steps, but these are still quite treacherous. If you look at the rocks, they are not even. But there you go, Judith has dropped Sophia. Judith has used that downhill to put space between her and Sophia. Um, she'll have the points in her mind because she knows how close they are. And uh, we're just gonna do some quick calculations on what happens if Judith comes in third and Sophia comes in fourth. Um, the difference between them would be 18 points. Wow. Um, so if it stays like this, first, second and third remain in these positions, then the, f the overall will be, it will be a tie. It would be a tie, but it would mean that Sophia, that Sophia would, due to the rules, Sophia would win. So Judith really, Judith needs to come first with Sophia in third. But Sophia's not far behind. Look, did you see the way the camera switched there? Yeah. We had Judith only a short distance ahead of Sophia. I suspect Sophia will close this gap on this climb. It's about a two kilometer climb with 120 meters of climbing. But uh, it's, it's really going to er erupt on this next downhill because this is very, very fast indeed. And here we see Sophia Luckley of the USA, but she is a dual national as well. She is Norwegian. She actually lives in Norway at the moment, and she is also uh, an Olympic skier. We have got absolute athletes as part of the Golden Trail World Series, and you can see them climbing up there. And if you're new to trail running and watching this, uh, it's steep. It's very, very steep. And if you see the athletes with their hands on the legs, doesn't mean that they're flagging. It just means they're conserving. And it's the way that you can run to kind of conserve your energy, but get ahead at the same time. And the leader at the moment of this Golden Trail World Series final is Mazalina Floria from Romania. And she's looking strong. She's looking relaxed. We hope she can maintain it. And, I, and if, if, if it stays as it is now, we will see Madalina jump onto the podium 
third overall and Sophia win the overall series tied on points with Judith but, but you're absolutely right Jess when they're stomping like that with their hands on their legs it's faster to do long walking strides than to try and run it particularly when it's technical it's extremely hard to try and run through that because you have to then do more steps which means more decisions and more changes of directions with your legs whereas hiking with a flat foot allows not only you to put the force through your whole leg but actually you can take a far longer stride but this is now Madalena she's uh, it looks like she's already got through that 120 meter climb she's now starting the descent coming in at the end of our second lap and it is a very steep fast descent indeed yeah and let's talk about the descent we've got judith um who is the the tall figure in the in the headband ahead and the, and the orange shorts she's a very good descender but david you are our trail running expert here you are a very good trail runner yourself what makes a great technical downhill runner well the interesting you say technical because you, you can have some runners like uh madalina who are just fast and they can use their speed downhill and they just stride out but a technical runner you need a lot of practice at it, but it's the ability to be able to um, spot three meters ahead where you need to flow through. If you think about, um, I'm trying to think of something similar, but if you've not mountain biked or skied, you don't actually look at where your feet are going. You're trying to predict what's happening ahead of you. It takes a lot of experience and a little bit of guts because you either try and take the weight off your feet put your body position with the weight forward so that you can use but here we see how close it is now oh, wow just a few seconds between first and then second and third isn't it and that is the mediterranean sea you can see on the side and they're not going to be taking in much of the view they're just going to be looking at where their feet are going but did you see madalina has been running up these trails and they have been stomping there's a different um a different style going up these uh, I think that is a little bit of naivety mm. um, from Madalena. She's she's not got the experience she the others have in trail. Later. And actually, it, it's a lot more tiring having to, to run when it's extremely steep like that. But she, she looked to me to have a, a longer lead than this on that previous down. So potentially they're catching her again yeah. on this up, um, which could mean Madalena is starting to tie. And the fact that Madalena's looking behind is not a good sign. Um, I don't think they spotted that, but psychologically, if you see the person in front of you looking back, that is telling you they are tired. They are nervous about you catching them. Yeah, and Madalena, she did put in such great performance in the prologue race, which was the, with the prelude to this finale two days ago here in northern Italy. It was an 8K time trial, and Madalena absolutely stomped that. I think she she won it by by a good 30-plus 30 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah, yeah, 37 seconds. Yeah, it's incredible. Seconds. And um, it was it was a short race overall. It was only eight kilometres. So for her to win it by that much, um, and she looked so strong in that show, she will be coming into this today with some confidence. But uh, Madalena does have trouble eating before races so her nutrition throughout this is going to be a bit of a question whereas Judith and Sophia they are a lot more experienced. Now she took a, a slight wrong turn earlier in this race it only cost her a few seconds but she lost Mammoth 26k because she went the wrong way she was leading she ended up in third place this course is is a lot better laid so it, it's it's far easier to find the right route but that will start to play in the Ooh, back she's looking back again this is not a good sign for madalina are um, we gonna see an overtake any second here david i, I mean, think we might they they really are clawing back the seconds on this hill uh, we know that madalina has got fast downhill but she's looked she's looked four times now in the last two minutes um that that is not a good mental headspace to be in. So, um, But maybe they'll come back together and then she'll hang on the end of these three. We'll just wait and see. But this really is hotting up to be the final we wanted. We love seeing a three-horse race at the at the head of this Golden Trail World Series final. It's exciting. It really is all to play for. And, and if Judith can overtake Madalena, even if Sophia is in second place, Judith will then win the overall series. This is the overall title on the line we're seeing here. Um, very, very significant. At the press conference, Judith said, Judith and Sophia were there, and Judith said, when I'm racing this, I am I can either stay the same or I can win. Sophia can either stay the same or she can lose. And actually, that is something that could be weighing on them at the moment. 
Sophia is potentially running thinking what she has to do to not lose this, whereas Judith will be in a, a far more positive mindset. But all three of them are locked together currently. It's a, a very, and that's that's Gabrielle. That is Judith's husband oh. running with her. Yeah. He will be feeding her information. He'll be uh, giving her support and encouragement. Um, that is... That is a huge benefit on the course. I know. I'd love to have a friend or a partner running with me when I'm out there. Think about that, the pep talks you can have. But that's Sophia we see in the back. She's in third place. She's still looking composed, but this does look fast, doesn't it? And it is her to lose. Last year in the Golden Trail World Series, she came second overall. So she is looking to go one better here, and she has to win today. But it, to it, looks, like, it looks like Judith and Madeline are now pressing the pace more because Sophia is starting starting to slip off the back of them. This is fourth place, placed Eve van Dongen from the National Series and from Sweden, who is having the performance of her life. In, and um, when we've researched the races she's done prior to this, she's had two big races, um, never in the proper international scene though. So this is the step up above. But we can see there, there is starting to be a bit of distance between second and third place. Significantly for Judith, she knew coming into the 2019 World Series final, she was in second place and took the overall crown in Nepal by winning the final. So she will have that in the back of her mind today and feel very positive about the position she's in because this downhill will give us an insight into what is going to happen and who is going to win this race and this series. We've heard that Sara Alonso on the left of your screen there is coming back on fourth place. Apparently there's only about a five second gap there. So could we see Sara Alonso, who's returning to full fitness, get into that top three? Who knows? But we love Sara here at the Golden Trail. Obviously. She's such a great personality on the tour and it's great to see her getting back to full fitness. And on the right of your screen, it's not quite the head of the race. That is Sophia Luckley. She is in third place and up ahead, you can see the taller figure of Judith Wider from Switzerland and it's between those two for the absolute win um, and here we are with Sara Alonso who's currently in fifth and looking strong and and the thing is about Sara um, I was filming at the A-frame which is two-thirds of the way up Pikes Peak and Sara was back in eighth place with the other Golden Trail runners and I could see the other runners were pushing hard but so and is this Marlin? Marlin Osa this yeah is, this is fantastic so the chip timer of the first chip timer did not pick up on Marlin Osa and we thought she was out of the top 10. Oh, this and that's Miao Yao behind her too from China. Oh, this is fan a fantastic performance for, for them then because Marlin knows she needs to finish ahead of Miao Yao and Sylvia to finish in the in, in fourth place overall in the series, which would be an incredible result for her. She wants to be top five. Uh, Madalena will be catapulting her today, given the uh, how good her performance is, is likely to be. Um, but we know that Madalena, so that Marlin has been very concerned about cramps kicking in. When she finished the prologue, she wasn't able to actually run in to the finish. She was having to jog and she looked very distressed about it. So this is a great sign for her. And so happy to see she's only 20 years old. Mm. She won the national series last year, quali qualifying her for the whole of this season. And she's come fifth, fifth and fifth so far. Consistency. So this is a great performance again from her. Yeah, and you can see they look very similar. They've been hanging out a lot this week together, actually. Marlin on your left there and Sophia on the right. There are similar age. Marlin is 20, I think Sophia is 24. And they're both Salomon athletes, which is why you can see them in the red vest and the black shorts. And if you can hear some cheering, that is because myself and David, we are at the finish line, basically, which is where all the athletes run through. And it's really exciting to be here, right in the thick of it, in Nolly, in Italy. And this is Sophia. We think she's in third place at the moment with Judith and Madalena ahead of her. This is Sara Alonso, who we believe is in fifth. And these women are putting in a great show so far. But there are five laps going on, but they're different loops. They're called flowers. And look, you can see fourth place already. Sara can see her. She will be tracking her down very soon, knowing these athletes um in pikes peak when sarah passed me she was in eighth and you could see the look on her face she was in far more pain 
than any of the runners around her, and yet she was still overtaking them. The Yao Yao, who's tucked in behind Sara, she has a very fast marathon time during COVID in China. She, she's done some very long ultra races at OCC. Um, she's done very well in the past. But during lockdown, she wasn't able to do trail, so she focused on her marathon pace and got a marathon time down to 2.37. So she has got the pace to be able to run the third and the fourth lap extremely fast. Um, I don't know if Sarah will know she's that close, but as Sarah comes through the town, her mum and dad will be tipping her off. And this is Sylvia, uh, Sylvia Nordskar, who may have dropped down a few places now. Mm. If and it's important to note that this, this whole race is 26.37 kilometers and the total elevation is 1,430 meters. Now, as we've been saying, it's a very different type of final and a very different type of, uh, of trail running races because it's not one long up like we see in other trail races like the Marathon de Mont Blanc. It is a lot of up and down and overall that elevation is 1.4K and it's, it's over a half marathon distance, the whole thing. It's 26.3K. And this is Madalena Flores and where's looking Judith? comfortable. Where well, was Judith? That, I mean, if you think how close they were only five minutes ago, this is a significant move by uh, Madalena. There's just no one behind her. She has decided now is the time to use her 1.11 half marathon pace. And um, she's looking a little bit tight there. Um, her, her leg movement isn't as fluid as, as we'd expect, but she, she's from Transylvania in Romania, where, where Dracula is from as well, but there's not actually significant hills near her. I think the highest peak is, is under a thousand meters. So she has been struggling to train with um, significant climbs regularly throughout her pre-season and during this season. Um, the fact that she's going now is, is, is ominous. If I was Judith, I'd be nervous because the harder downhill trail has already happened. Um, but lap three does have some very s s tight switchbacks. I ran it three days ago. And even with my slow jogging pace, I was struggling to make these turns. So um, if, they're, if they're going out too fast in lap three, there is a chance they won't be able to hit those turns and it could be quite perilous. Let's talk about the lead up to this race then, David. So we, we started back many months ago for the Golden Trail World Series and there's six uh, regular races and then you come here for the finale. But in terms of what the athletes would have been up to this morning, they would have got up really early to fuel and then they would take on nutrition throughout the day but talk us through that, David. So uh, one of the great things about the final, being able to do our own final, is the race starts at 10 a.m., which is not too early. Typically, athletes would be waking up at least three hours before they race to have their breakfast. Here's Judith in second place, coming over the, the second peak it, really. now. And actually, there is there's a 120-meter very steep descent. So Sophia isn't still in touch with Judith, um, but... By the end, I ex by the bottom of this hill, I expect the gap to be longer and that would be very hard for Sophia to, to mentally then try and attack back and claw back that distance. She knows it, if it stays in the current position, Oh, we, might, win the we overall. might see an overtake in a second. Sara Alonso here may be going up into fourth place in just a few seconds. So this, this is Eve van Dongen from the National Series representing Sweden. She wasn't, ex wasn't someone we were expecting to see in this top 10. She's performing incredibly well, um, but she has been losing time to, to Sara for the last mile or two. We just hope that it doesn't mean that Eve has gone out too fast. She did have a good prologue, um, but quite often, if you get behind and you start to feel bad, this is an extremely hard race, particularly because the third climb is very, very annoying. It's scrambly, it's single track, you have to duck, you get scratched. If you're in a negative frame of mind, you can spiral downhill. And I, I mean, Sarah's a fantastic downhill runner. We expect that, yeah, here we go. Yeah, here comes talk the about a negative frame of mind. We'll talk about a positive one for Sarah Alonso here in the visor passing Eve Van Dongen and she'll be feeling good. She looks strong. But talking about um, energy and managing your energy levels throughout these, typically, David, um, they'll be taking on nutrition at these aid stations, but it varies per athlete, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the challenges with moving from track or coming to trail is that you think of a half marathon as, as being, for these runners, 111, 110, 115s. But when you suddenly take in the altitude and the climbing and you take in the uh, the trail, the race is 
suddenly become marathon length times. We're talking kind of two hours 15, two hours 20. Your body can only hold 75 minutes of glycogen stores and so you need to be refueling or your energy systems will plummet. A lot of these athletes will run with bottles, not today because of the lapped course allows them to pick up drinks as they go, but they'll be taking on gels, they'll be taking on caffeine, and if you're someone who hasn't adapted to that properly, which Madalena hasn't yet, it can really start to impact you towards the end of the race because your body can't break down your fat cells fast enough and that leaves you with a gap in your energy levels and that's when people slow down, they hit the wall and they bonk in the race. We hope that won't happen today, but if they haven't fuel, if they're not fueling well now, it will affect them by the end of the race and that could have a big impact on who wins the day. We've seen even with Sophia at Mont Blanc, her first ever marathon, her biggest fear going into it was whether or not she'd actually be able to fuel properly. In Nordic skiing, it's so fast and it's a very different sport that she said that she never really takes on a huge amount of nutrition in that. So she's had to adapt to this in the same way Madalena is as well. So, um, Sara Alonso though will have her nutrition strategy absolutely spot on and that won't be impacting her. Similarly with Judith Weider, she's a five times world orienteering champion. She is one of the most experienced athletes on this course. And actually as an orienteer coming to this race today, you're not used to long climbs. Typically you'll be doing 50, 100 meter climbs up and down constantly. And it's more like a hit session, which plays into Judith's hand. A hit session or a long run in the mountains, David. I know what I prefer. I'd like to be out on those mountains instead of doing a sweaty hit session. And but fact, look this at this. Sarah's this parents. Is Sarah's parents. Right? Yep, Center, waving there. And Octavio, one of the, uh, the coaches of uh, Robert mm -hmm. uh, Kimoy. But they'll be cheering her on and feeding her information as she comes through to this, uh, this cheer zone. And we can see lots of fans out on the course as well. That's Miao Yao of China. That's Elise Ponset there. Uh, these are some of the runners a bit further back. And this is the fan zone. It's also the start and finish. And it's a great turnout here in Nolly in northern Italy today. They're loving having the event here. Look at people with their cowbells, smiling faces. It's been super hospitable. The Italians are loving having this major trail race on their, on their front door. And that's Julia Font coming through. She's in our top 10 overall as well. She'll be hoping to maintain that position so she can get uh, race support for the next series and be in the Golden Trail World Series for the whole season. Um, yes, well, it's worth talking about that, isn't it, David? Because if you finish in the top 10 overall rankings here in the Golden Trail World Series, you will basically get it paid for to attend next year's, next season's Golden Trail World Series event. And we know that this is the best trail running series out there. And so it really is a golden ticket. Absolutely. And there, there are rumors that I cannot confirm or deny <laughs> of um, races happening in Asia early in the season that will be fantastic so a lot of these athletes know they that is the trip they want to do not just for the points and for the overall standings but actually because the road trips that that happen this year in america we, we visited yosemite we visited the golden gate bridge everyone travels together as a family and that uh, people want to be on that trip but we're now seeing sophia lockley in third place on the um the second descent of her second lap she'll be coming into the town quite soon as the race currently stands she will win the overall series in joint place on points with judith but win the overall series if judith can't catch madalina um, but madalina floria the romanian runner new to the series this season is leading this race and is currently the favourite to win if Judith can't catch her on these downhills. Well, in terms of the points, Sophia Luckley is 18 points ahead of Judith in the overall standings. If, so, if Judith comes second in this and Sophia comes third, I believe that, yeah, it's 18 points again, the difference. And so they would be tied, but Sophia would win it on the overall rules. So, gosh, it's close. And we, uh, we said the overall rules. rules. We're going to ask why, because uh, we don't know. We didn't check this because we didn't think it was going to be that critical because uh, the, the race has unfolded in, in a way we hadn't quite expected. But we are currently following here. I think that's Julia Font 
from um, Spain who we saw, who uh, is one of our top 10 runners as well. The, we are seeing the, the finish line and also the cheer zone because Madalena Fleuria will be finishing her second lap very soon. She's coming up to the, the 15K mark well over halfway through this race. And this is the peak of our second lap. Yeah, and is, uh, we've got about one hour left because we expect this race to take about two hours, 15 minutes for the women. Uh, it's the men's finale tomorrow, but today it's all about the women. And look, we're running through the towns. You can see the water because today it's a lovely sunny day. It's a good temperature. I think it's about maybe 19 degrees out there. But let us tell you, it has been torrential. The last couple of days have been horrendous weather and, and this is normally a riverbed when it rains because the temperature and the the the, uh, the climate can change so much through the winter but uh you'll see she's now coming into the town and there are some quite tight turns here we don't know whether the bike will be able to keep up with her but here she comes she's going to be she's... passing us very soon we'll be able to see how she's looking yeah but, um... look at these crowds out there we are at the start finish crossover line and madalina floyd just over there taking on some nutrition our location is absolutely epic here in nolly italy we absolutely love it look she's got something in her hand she's taking it on board she'll throw it away in a second and she is running through the streets of nolly ready for the last couple of laps of this Golden Trail World Series final. And, and you can see there the people that she's, that's the handover, that is Damien, who is one of the, the Golden Trail um, World Trail Series Romanian runners as well. That three, three Romanians are in the, in the World Series. And, uh, being, and here's Judas gone through as well. It's absolutely um, electric here, isn't it, David? The fans, the people getting behind them. I really hope this boosts Madalena to keep her going. Oh, little, almost a little stumble there. And they've all picked up nutrition significantly. Judith picked up a bottle. It looked as if um, that Madalena has not taken a bottle. She's just taking a gel. Um, that uh, and, and we have we're seeing now coming through Sophia. They're all about equally distance between them, maybe 20, 30 seconds between each one. Those, those, that is catchable in the next climb. But uh, Madalena did pick up nutrition, which we know earlier in the season she wouldn't have done. She wouldn't have been brave enough or she'd have feared what that would do to her stomach. She's clearly been practicing this. Um, after America, I, I did ask her to go out and after every big meal to do her, her jog. So her, her stomach gets used to just running while you've got all of that food stuck in your gut. So hopefully that's going to pay dividends today and it's not going to affect her energy levels too much. Yeah, one of the great things about the Golden Trail World Series is that we get to be with the athletes a lot. They get to be around each other a lot. So David here, yeah, our, our resident expert trail runner, uh, gets to give all these tips to the athletes, talk to them, help them perform the best they can. Because some of these athletes will come with big teams around them and some of them are coming on their own. Um, Madalena, who we see here, doesn't have a big team with her at all. She's not a sponsored athlete at the moment, uh, but that could all change off the back of this race. And also, the footage that you are seeing from the Golden Trail World Series is really something special. Not many trail running races, in fact, not any other trail running races are filmed like this. We have got a series of elite runners who hold, um, hold cameras, hold GoPros, and that footage is sent directly through to what you're seeing now. We have many of them out on the course, as well as mountain bikers and cyclists, all who are extremely um, adept at their own sport and have com competed in this, or, and that's why we can get such amazing footage judith here looking you know she's stomping she's putting her hands on those thighs she's looking a little bit tired she is but th there was a 30 second gap between uh, madalena and judith 22 between judith and sophia this is the longest climb of the day 360 meters and as you can see from judith's body position it's extremely steep it is a technical up as well and we saw earlier on that second lap they closed the gap on madalena when it became steep climbing because that's when it changes from being speed and leg power and so i would expect as we get 
closer to the middle of this climb for Judith to be able to climb to close the gap slightly on Madalena. So it wouldn't surprise me if they start to all actually group together again, leading to a, a huge battle on this this big downhill of our third lap. So our, our third big lap, should we say, rather than third lap. But you can see Judith there. She's she's still looking. Uh, she's flowing well. She doesn't look like she's too tight. She looks like. Um, I'd expect her to be able to attack these downhills given that she looks like she's still got a lot of strength and in fact they both look like they've they've not been going out too fast. It's absolutely going to erupt later in this race so do stay tuned because this race is not over yet. Madalena Flora here still leading us out. And here we are with Sara Alonso ahead and Marlin Osa. Oh, Marlin just dropped. Doesn't look, didn't look like she actually wanted to drop that there. Um, she's only 20 years old and Sara Alonso looking strong here. Uh, we believe that we're looking at the fourth and fifth runners. This is fourth and fifth and these two know each other better than ever. Any any two on the, on the tour. They are both from the Basque region of Spain. Two years ago, um, we saw that uh, Marlin came and won the Mont Blanc half marathon. Um, in fact, maybe last year, the same year that Sara Alonso won the marathon. And Sara was saying, Marlin is the future of this sport. In the, the finals last year, they finished the last day together. And Sara gave a piggyback to Marlin on her shoulders. Sara, Sara has not beaten Marlin yet this season, even though she probably is on paper the better runner. Um, but she's coming back from injury, so this is going to be a massive battle, especially with Miao Yao from China, tucked in behind, who has a 2.37 marathon time and is extremely fast on the kind of trails that are towards the end of this race. One of the things we absolutely love here about the Golden Trail World Series is how international it is. We have got runners from Romania here with Madalena Floria. We've got Sophia Lackley from the USA. We've got Judith Wider, who is Swiss. Then we've got Miao Yao, who's there, actually, in the wow, white and the black vest behind. from China, yeah. Let's see who takes what. Two bottles Ooh, Miao Yao. Interesting. So she clearly is um, the challenge of this race as well. It doesn't feel hot, but it's very humid because there's been so much rain the last few days. And so you'll be in the trees of the first two climbs and it is getting hotter and hotter. And so if you're not taking enough liquid, that will start to impact you. But wow, all three oh. of them together right now. And this is really the battle for seeing who's going to come overall in those fourth and fifth places. And um, fourth and fifth today, which is our kind of semi-podium. Fantastic race. These three haven't really been locked in a battle yet this season. No, and we love to see it. And something important to note is that Marlin Osa overall at the moment is fourth in the is third in the rankings. Miao Yao is sixth, but Sara Alonso is all the way down in 19th because she was injured for the first part of the season. So it'll be so important for Sara to get as high as possible in this race today so that she can make the top 10 so that she can be in the top 10 and therefore be paid and, and supported to come and be part of the Golden Trail World Series next year, which is what she'll really want. And here we are back with second place, Judith Wider, who is sitting second in the overall ranking. So she's going to want that first place. We're just going to do some quick calculations on what, what does it mean if Madalena wins this? Where does Marlin need to come overall to stay third in the series? Well, we're uh, going to have to get our maths heads on, get the Excel spreadsheets and the calculators out, aren't we, yeah. David? Mad Madalena came into this race um, having um, dropped. She was leading Sierra Zanau and dropped back significantly. She was uh, doing well in Pikes Peak but dropped back and then came third in Mammoth Lake. So her form has been improving, which means overall in the series, she hasn't had a great score until the prologue. She now lies in fifth, but she is 30 nine points between behind Marlin Osa. If she were to win today, I think Marlin would have to come at, at least fourth to be able to uh, to come third in the series, maybe even podium. So Marlin will have that in the back of her mind. And fourth at the moment in the overall rankings is Sylvia Nordskar from Norway. And we're, we're just going to wait for an update of whereabouts she is. We expect her to be in the top 10, but it's, it's a shame not to see her in the, in the chasing pack at the moment. But this is Judith Weider. She currently lies second in this race with uh, Madalena Faria from 
Romania ahead of her. Judith Wiener um, for Red Bull and Hoka from Switzerland. She knows that as things lie, if she finishes in second place with Sofia behind her and Madeline ahead, she will not win the overall series. She'll end up on equal points, but because Sofia has won three races pre-season and Judith has only won two, therefore, Sofia will win. So Judith knows she needs to catch Madalina Faria to win the overall series. But Judith is the best downhill descender, the downhill runner in the world. And this has 360, in fact, 420 meters of descent still to go on this lap. Some of it quite technical. So the fact that she's not in touch yet doesn't mean this race is over. No, definitely. I, I think the important thing is that basically Judith needs someone between her and Sophia to be able to take the win. They can't be next to each other in first and second or second and third. She needs someone in between her so that she gets enough points to take the overall win. Um, and we'd like to know, it's, we don't know how many seconds it is that Sophia luckily is back on Judith, but she will be trying to chase her down. But also, we've seen Sofia bide her time throughout the Golden Trail World Series races. She doesn't often always lead the whole time. She has on occasion, but she can also come from behind and, and slowly pick people off. But Madalena, uh, Floria on your right, it is doing well so far. We have got uh, about 45 minutes, we think, left on this race. Yeah, absolutely. And there, um, this third loop, it's quite scrambly at the top. People have been saying previously that lap two was the technical one, but I actually think that that is a big trap for these runners because not all of them have seen this third loop. We're going to get quite a, a sharp, sharp technical down at the start, but the switchbacks are so tight on this third loop that if you are running too fast, you will crash out on the corners. Not all of these athletes have had the chance to actually run it and know that. So um, it's going to be very hard to balance attacking and trying to use gravity to run fast without getting tied into that speed and unable to make the turns. Yes, but yes. So the, the athletes um, have been here for a few days um, trying to acclimatize and looking and they've been checking out the different loops on this course. And uh, we will be getting an update very soon about how many seconds are between each runner. Um, but it's setting out to be such a great finale here in Nolly in northern Italy for the Golden Trail World Series. First time that the, the route has been set like this. And we've also got runners from the local area Area taking part we've got golden trail national series runners as well and we have got an update on time so madalina floria uh from romania is leading out judith here that you can see on the screen 31 seconds back and sophia from the usa is 53 seconds back on madalina so there's about a 20 second gap between second and third um and gosh it really is all to play for but then there is a big gap between third and fourth that leading pack of sarah marlin and meow yao in fourth fifth and sixth they're about five minutes back on the pace. I so. mean, that, that is incredible. To put five minutes gap over someone as fast as Miao Yao and Sara Alonso already in this race. They're only 15k in and they've managed to bridge a to create a five minute gap between them. Cute. It just shows you how much our top three are battling each other out on this course. They're leaving nothing behind. Incredible racing. But you can see the, uh, the, the hills that they're going over. There are four significant climbs, four significant hills that they're doing. And that has meant that the athletes can stay more in touch with each other. But Madalena has pulled out 10 more seconds on the climb so far from the bottom. So she's not slowing down and actually she's showing that Judith is unable to use the more technical climb to actually stomp back. So I'd say at the moment it is advantage Madalena from what we've seen so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's great to see that she's still going strong. But because they have put in such a good shift early on and they are that five minutes up on the next leading group who are also exceptional runners, it does beg the question, have they given too much too soon and are they going to tire early? We just don't know. And also, it's not just about tiring on these routes at Golden Trail World It's also an ankle could go. You could potentially take the wrong direction. There's so many things at play in trail running. It's not simple your speed and you can see our camera runners here doing an incredible job of keeping up keeping up with these ladies now if you don't know what the golden trail series is it brings together the best most exciting and prestigious trail races in the world to try and crown the well to crown the overall best trail runner 
at distances between half marathons and marathons. The whole intent of this is to try and create a product, a visual extravaganza that shows you the skill and the speed on offer that you just can't get in road racing. If you took, we, in fact, you do take, there are runners who come at this who have been road runners before and they, they come, they race and they leave because they haven't got the strength at, or the ability to run on terrain like this. And we're seeing a masterclass today. Three very different runners all battling it out at the front. We've got Judith, a very good downhill descender. We've got Sophia, who is a good climber, and Madalena, who just has that raw pace. And they are all within a minute of each other, battling it out for the race victory, but also for the overall series between Judith and Sophia. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's also all about your lung capacity on, on this trail running. It really is. I mean, on the left of your screen, you've got Sophia Luckley. She has got lungs of a demon because she is also uh, an Olympic skier and she uses those lungs to perfection. We were talking earlier, David, about how, how Sara Alonso who I think it's either in fourth or fifth at the moment. She's also very hot on her lung capacity, on her heart rate. And so many of these runners will be. They know exactly what beats per minute they need to be at, at which point in the race. And that plays into it a lot. And if, if Sophia has had the... There's almost nothing Sophia can do now. It's quite a strange position to be in. If she has had an update from people where everyone is, she knows she's not going to be caught for third. She's got a five-minute gap on Sarah. And she can battle to beat Judith, but in some ways it doesn't really matter because if Madalena wins, Sophia will win the overall series. I'm sure Sophia will still want to, to show that she can beat Judith. Um, if, if not for this year, for an, a mental advantage for next year. But um, at the moment, it, it must be mentally tough knowing that actually whatever you do right now, the series and the overall crown is no longer in your control. Yeah, and she doesn't know what's going on ahead of her either because if Judith is in that in that second place, like Sophia is safe because there's 18 points between them. They'll end up on the same points, but but Sophia will win overall because she's won more Golden Trail World Series races. But she doesn't know if Madalena falters. If Judith takes that first place, then Sophia's out of the out of the running for that overall victory. And so she just needs to hang on, keep strong. And you know what? Let's talk about the the mental strength involved in trail running. We at the last Euro Sport. Um, broadcast of the Golden Trail World Series and Sierra Zanel. We were joined by absolute legend Killian Journey, who was telling us what goes on in his mind when he's running. And it's always just to that next aid station, just to that next lamppost, just to that next tree. And that is what's going to be going on in the minds of these runners. But Sophia, she, she's used to this. She's an absolutely exceptional athlete and uh, she'll be used to dealing with this type of thing. Now, Madalena here, she looks like she's moving slowly. She is still climbing, um, but we've, we've done some calculations. If Madalena, if it stays the same, Madalena will be third overall in the series. He wasn't even in the top 10 coming into this weekend. An incredible performance. Stay tuned. And yeah, she came into this weekend where she wasn't even in the top 10 because she joined the series in Sierras and now. So that was the, the fourth race in the series. And so she missed out on opportunities to score big points. And so she came into the, to this weekend knowing that to get a good sponsor, she'd have to perform not only well in the final, but also in the prologue. She's already won the prologue, beating Sophia by 37 seconds. So to be able to turn it around and so that, show that it's not just raw pace she has, she has a complete trail running package and ability and skills on the downhill is, is really impressive. And to jump up onto our podium, which it looks like she may do if she continues and wins this, third overall in the series, having joined at the halfway point is incredible. Yeah, absolutely exceptional. And we do know that Madalena is extending that lead. It is about one minute 10 between Madalena and this lady here, Judith Wider. Um, but it, then it's about 50 seconds back to Sophia Lackley. And it really is setting out to be such an exciting race. What a performance it would be if Madalena does win this. You, you've got to feel for her because she was leading the way at Sierra's 
now. And then she was leading the way at, in America, but she took the wrong turning and therefore she didn't take that when she came in third. So, it, gosh, it would be, you know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. And if for her to win today, Madalina, she doesn't really mind about the overall rankings so much. I think she'd be absolutely um, elated to get a win here. This means she's in the top 10 and third overall and be therefore on the tour next year and and this is a, a fantastic performance by judith weeder who we just saw there she's five times world orienteering champion switched to trail we're now back with madalina Furia leading the golden trail world series final um and for judith as well there will be a, a tally in her head of how many times she's raced um sophia and who is up who is actually the better athlete between them two because that, that will be something that she'll pride herself on. The first race they ran together with the Dolomis run, um, we know Sophia had issues with the altitude and, and potentially had COVID, I believe. Um, that was 1-0 to Judith. Then back in America, we saw at Pikes Peak, Sophia sat on her shoulder the whole way up and only overtook her with three miles to go. Um, so the fact that she's now beating Sophia without the altitude at a properly technical trail race i think will mean a lot to her because judith will have this will be in the back of her mind that people have been saying firstly that elise Posset is a better downhill runner than her that will be in the back of her mind secondly that sophia is better than her at trail running and judith today will be running not just for the overall points and for potential victory today but to try and remind everyone that she still is the one of the best trail runners in the world and she, she's the 2019 world series champion she wants to remind everyone why she was and she's certainly doing that today yeah and it's good to also talk about what oh look look at this on your screen here we have got some authentically dressed italians down there on the right hand side of your screen Noli, the town here in Northern Italy, absolutely loving it. But in terms of these runners' backgrounds, uh, the top three, they all come from, from different backgrounds. I mean, you talk about orienteering background, David. For those at home who don't, don't really understand how that works, uh, why does it make you such a good runner? Well, we, we find with the orienteers, they, they tend to be very good technically. And when we say technically, it means that they can run over and through rocks very quickly. Typically, they won't be limited to, to just smooth trails they'll often be having to navigate as they run and will just run across and through and down and around a mountain so they're used to running over all types of terrain at speed without necessarily just focusing on the ground so they're having to do two things so when they switch to trail we found they can be devastatingly good um, downhill um, there's there's people like Fred Tranchard who have demonstrated that ability certainly Judith as well and um, she switched across in 2019 and immediately was uh, had a massive impact beating Maud uh, Mathis at the Dolomis run by slicing through the course of her technical ability to to, to, to beat to, to, to reel in two minutes but Miao Yao has made a move yeah she is now sitting, I believe, in, in fourth there, which is really exciting. She, ha she went out so strong back in the Marathon de Mont Blanc. Um, and in terms of this lady's background, she was a shorter distance runner, 5K and 10K, generally on, on track and on road. And she's more of, a, more of a newcomer to trail than the others. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and already this season, we've seen how much she's developed and grown. She, she made mistakes at Sierra's and Al. Um, she made mistakes at Pikes Peak and she still only is um, on that journey. She is not the finished article yet. So it's incredible that she can be leading this race. And to, to finish third in this series will allow her to come in next year fully supported. And, and this will be playing on Judith and, and uh, Sophia's mind is if they're losing to her now, how good will she be next year when she's had the chance to actually do more training, tra uh, training on technical terrain, when she's got her nutrition on point. But you can see now she's, she's still absolutely flowing through this course. Mm. And this is the coming towards the, the last climb of our fourth lap. There's a 60 meter climb that she'll be taking, uh, that she'll be doing. Then there's a fast downhill into the final 2K with a 120 meter burp of a final lap that she will smash through. 
At the moment, I can't see her being caught. She's just too fast. It looks like her energy levels are fine. Although, having Don't, said yeah, that, I was gonna say, look, how good Judith, <laughs> look how good Judith looks. Wow. Yeah, she's looking strong. And yeah, David, commentator's curse. And she'll hate you for that in a minute. She does get caught. But uh, good to remind people that the total length of this race is 26.37 kilometers. So 26K over a half marathon distance. And the total elevation, a lot of up and down. But in total, it's 1,430 meters. But this this race has already claimed some victims. Some runners have already, um, have already, unfortunately, dropped out Daniela Omus and Therese LaBeouf, who we were expecting to be, you know, in the, the top 10. And they are in the top 10 overall rankings before coming into this. It looks as if Tabor Hemming was, was struggling just next to our tent earlier. I hope everything's OK for her. I know her and her husband have, have kind of been forced into having to, to, to run a 50K last weekend to, to try and qualify for another race, which um, it's, it's very frustrating when you, you see the impact it has on someone's series as, uh, on someone's season. But um, we, we do know we've had Daniela Omus and Therese LaBeouf drop out today, which means they're unlikely to finish in the top 10 overall in the series. Uh, really bad news for them, but great news for runners like Arna Gibson from America and for Alice Gaggi from, from Italy, who have both joined this series halfway through and gives them the opportunity to now finish in top 10 overall, which will then qualify them for backing next year, which is just so, so useful for ensuring that you can turn up to races um, unstressed and ready to race hard. But we're currently seeing now our second place and on the left, Judith Wieder, and first place on the right, uh, yeah. Madalena Faria from Romania. And you can see that they're different styles, partly because of the terrain. Yeah, and it's about one minute 20 between them. And gosh, the last, the last bit of this race is really, really hotting up. So Judith has just summited the, the first climb of our fourth lap. It's a bit of a scrambling technical down for a little bit, but then as you can see from, um, from where we are with Madalena, it then opens up a bit. This is a section Madalena's running now, which I was talking about earlier, where you can run extremely quickly, but there are some very tight turns that come without you realizing. Um, having the camera runner behind her will be useful in some regards because they won't be blocking, she'll be able to see the trail. But actually, if the camera runner was slightly further ahead, they'd be anticipating that turn earlier, which could be useful. But you can see here, yes, yeah, she's having to slow down a lot. And uh, this is extremely a, a wiggly part of the course. <laughs> wiggly is definitely one word for it, David. In fact, there you go. There's, that was one of the turns. She almost came to a stop there to be able to... Um, thankfully, she wasn't running too quickly. She's, she's clearly taken on board that you can't go full gas down this hill yeah, and you can see a cyclist there uh, going behind one of the runners these are extremely um like difficult terrains and often in trail running or other running events you, you have motorbikes with big camera operators on the back but here we use nimble runners and and cyclists and they have gopros on them to follow look, the, the bike, runners the I bike can't do it the, the bike's struggling oh, and to look, keep it wow and, and, and this is proper scramble right try running into that i, I don't know what the bike's gonna do now um, no, we've got a camera runner instead maybe but we've lost, we've lost judith in the tree somewhere yes indeed and, and this is our camera runner now trying to catch up with um madalena is, is this madalena yeah this is this okay. is madalena floria leading away at the moment in the golden trail world series final and uh she's putting in such a good performance there are some uh, treacherous parts lower down this course that you will see and and the the camera runner is is Fair play to them is struggling to keep onto this pace. It's extremely hard to be able to to run and to ensure that your GoPro is pointing in the right direction. But um, this was one of the big question marks we had over Madalena before today is whether she could use her pace and actually be able to adjust it and still be able to run on the slightly more technical run. She's, she's got a, it looks like she's got quite a good body position. Her arms are out wide to try and balance, but these, these turns and these twists don't seem to be slowing her down at all so far. No, and in terms of the chasing pack, well, we've had the top three, which is Madalena, Floria, Judith Wider, and uh, Sophia, luckily, uh, kind of tied together since the beginning. And behind them, five minutes and 45 is the chasing pack. So it doesn't look like they're going to catch them. It just depends if these three can stay out ahead, 
stay comfortable, stay in control and stay uh, hydrated and just, yeah, in control of this race. Now, Madeline has got a, a 60 meter climb just to come. There's going to be some dogs here who absolutely lose it, because uh, <laughs> and which will give her a nice little kick of adrenaline. But she's got a 60 meter climb and then it's extremely fast downhill into the 24k mark when they come through the the a station for the last time she she will be running from now on almost flat out knowing that she has a, a 90 second lead and that she just needs to try and keep focused not make any mistakes on her navigation and she will have her second victory but her first major race victory of this series yeah the question is that does she know how much lead she's got we don't know what information she'll be given we don't know if she will know that um, but she's just going to want to try and extend that lead as much as possible because in the downhill Judith Wider of Switzerland is strong and you can see some of our marshals here uh, letting people oh and she's going up she's starting that that ascent there uh, and we've just got a final part to go. We've just seen Mad Madalina Faria enter the final climb of lap four, the fourth lap. Um, and this is Judith Weider in second place. She's not too far behind. We saw this right. This is the beginning. Oh, no, she's gone the wrong way. Oh, phew. I thought she was pulling left there. I nearly oh, made that mistake. almost had a heart attack. Oh. There, blimey. We, don't, we hate seeing any athletes ever taking a wrong turning. Now, Judith will know that Madalina has a significant lead over her at this stage. In fact, she can't see her, but she would have been updated. Judith knows that if she wants to win the overall series, she has to overtake Madalina. There's about a 90-second gap between them. It's an extremely fast downhill. It now comes down to, has Madalina got her nutrition right or has she gone out too fast? Because both of these ladies are quick enough to be able to um, to catch the other if they've got it wrong. Um, but it's that the, the dice is in Madalina's hand. Has she learned from pre-season, from mid-season mistakes? And can Judith, the fastest downhill runner in the world, reel her in? What a question. Fastest downhill runner in the world. Then, then you've also got Sophia Lackley in third place, who um, you know, is just going to try and hold on to that. But if something happened to her and she dropped another place, then, then Judith here would take the overall title. It's going to be quite a, quite a dicey finish area, you know, when the people are crossing. You just don't know who is going to be in what place overall. And yes, let's look at current leaders. So we've been running for, for one hour and 32 minutes for Monica Madalina Flora. And in second place, it's Judith Wider. Third is Sophia Lackley. Fourth is Sarah Alonso, and then uh, compatriot from Spain is Marlin Osa there. And then sixth, Miao Yao from China. Seventh, Julia Font Gomez. Eighth is a national series runner, it's Eve Van Dongen. Ninth, the French lady, Elise Ponset. And the Italian, they're going to be rooting for her here in 10th place at the moment, is Alice Gaggi. And third, fourth, and fifth are all lo locked in a battle together. They came through the aid station at the bottom of the climb. Um, five kilometers ago, all in a tight pack. We thought maybe Miao Yao had made a move, but no, there's one second between our third, fourth, and so our fourth, fifth, and sixth runner. And they can, and in trail running, you have your top three, but top five is also considered an extended podium. This looks like our top three there. Um, I believe that is our top three. And this to me looks like Sara Alonso is just dropping off the back slightly of Miao Yao and um, of Marlin Osa, which um, would be, wouldn't be unexpected in some regards, given that Sara hasn't had the pre-season, pre hasn't been able to train fully because of her injury, injury and only came back to race back in Pikes Peak. So this is her third race of the season. So um, she will be feeling the lack of training in her legs now, but it's still all those three fighting and Marlin knows that she needs to come third overall if she wants to maintain her third position in the overall series and this footage that we're seeing it's just epic isn't it here we're in northern Italy the start and finish line is in the town called Nolly there's four municipalities that have come together to put on this race and it is such a spectacle really quaint medieval town but then with absolutely dense kind of forests and trails around it and the beautiful Mediterranean Sea 
as well. And uh, we're, we're delighted to be having the final, the grand final of both the men's and women's Golden Trail World Series finals here. And we're with Madalena Flora. And she's looking, she's looking a little bit short in her stride, a little bit tight, but still relaxed, still going and still a very decent pace. There is still one lap to go, but it's so short. There's only a 120 meter climb in it. From the moment she reaches this peak, it's an all out sprint of only three and a half kilometers, two miles to the finish. And uh, crossing that point mentally will be a big tick in her, in, in her confidence to know, actually I'm, I'm within reach now. I've just got to stay calm and stay smooth because this will be by far the biggest win, win of her career. Sponsors, are you watching? Please mm -hmm. get your checkbooks out because we want to see some tasty contracts coming in for Madalena for next season. Absolutely tasty indeed. And so will the Golden Trail World Series be next year. The calendar is yet to be revealed, but it's going to be a very tasty one indeed. Look at those views. The town are right behind this race. And Madalena Floria, let's see if she can hold on to this lead and come third, hopefully overall, in the Golden Trail World Series. Absolutely. And uh, we, we're still seeing a lot of the athletes coming through near us, near the cheer zone at the, uh, the base of the climb. Um, Madalena is around a kilometre and a half away from, uh, from rejoining us at the base of this downhill. It is a very fast downhill, um, this section. I'm, I'm happy enough to announce that I do have the segment for this next Ooh, downhill. Ooh, go on this, then, David. This Treat is going to be crushing to see how much quicker they, uh, they run than me down this. But... Um, uh, that she's just about to reach the top of this final 60 meter climb. Um, it's very, very runnable. And then it's a, a quite wide trail that um, she'll know when she hits that, she'll be able to start pushing um, on the gas a little bit more confidently without the switchbacks to, to stop her. And speaking of segments and things, these these runners, most of them do put what they're, what they're running online and on the app so that you can track them. You can put yourself against them. But if you're new to trail running, this is the first time you might be tuning in on Eurosport to this epic sport and if you want to get involved in it what do people do david you know they just grab their trainers you can basically do trail running anywhere and that's why we love it absolutely and, and the great thing about the golden trail is there are national series as well so in, in 20 different countries in the world there are other races that you can take part in where some of them you will race the the world's elite athletes but you can take part locally and, and you can turn up and walk it you can jog it um, the great thing about trail running versus other races when you finish a trail half marathon 10k no one asks you what your time is no one no one cares because the, there's no reference in the way you'd have with road running so there's far less pressure on it about being how fast you finish and therefore how you equate yourself to others and it's far more about enjoying mm. the experience getting out into the outdoors and actually just getting in contact with nature because it, these places are beautiful and they take you to places that you may not go to otherwise uh, but but look at this view she's not gonna be able to take it in that much but i'm sure she's preferring this to running through some horrible cities <laughs> in her road running career this is far far more beautiful and we've got judith also on that final climb she was only one one minute 25 seconds behind now, the leader it's now one minute 12 we hear between them so she is wow. losing it but we are of course biased here at the golden trail World we love the trails we love the mountains we love the views but there really is nothing like making a peak like that and coming back down and, and the adrenaline you get from it and and the different skills you need and, and just taking in all the nature and environment around you as well but one minute 12 can judith catch her she could i mean judith really can judith is is the most experienced runner you don't get five world orienteering championship golds and wins without knowing how to pace your race to perfection she will be coming into an aid the aid station with around two kilometers less left so she has a very fast downhill coming and she will get an update on the gap between them so if judith can keep on pressing and close that 112 to less than a minute she certainly has the ability to then win this overall race and if she wins the overall race she wins the series what a battle this is going to be this race is certainly not over
at the moment on your screen, you're seeing Judith Wider from Switzerland on your left-hand side with a one minute, 12 seconds behind the race leader on the right unsponsored Madalena Floria from Romania. Here she is. She doesn't do the stomping up, which is the hands on the legs. She has been staying upright. She has got. Uh, she has maintained a good pace. She's looked relaxed. We are going into the final, final part of this, this race in the Golden Trail World Series final. There's been eight races overall, and this is the end. And look, Judith now taking on maybe her final nutrition. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's so vital to keep on taking on nutrition the whole way through. Even if you don't actually need the nutrition at this stage, by doing a glucose rinse of the mouth, it, it, it signals to the brain that glucose is coming, and it will then release extra glycogen stores from the muscles. She'll know this. She, that's the thing. This is why, even though she's behind, and on paper a, a slower runner um, on, on on that last lap she's got so much more experience and she knows how to manage her race trail races so well that this will start to play into her hands and um, knowing that the whole series is on the line she that will surely be more fuel in her fire Madalena going for the win of the race but Judith going for the win of the series. Oh, guys, nail-biting stuff. And overall, we expect this race to take about two hours, 15 minutes. We've got about 20 minutes left, and it's 26.37 kilometers. And if you're just joining us on Eurosport, it's an elevation of 1,430 meters. And it's a five-loop race of, of different areas of this amazing region we're in in northern Italy. You've even got some authentically dressed uh, medieval characters there at the bottom right of your screen. Uh, the fans here have been amazing. The Golden Trail World Series, it's the first time that we're having the finale here and it really is something different, it's something special. It's not one long uphill, it's a multiple up and down. The sun is out in force today. It hasn't been that way in the lead up. The prologue, which happened just a couple of days ago, was in absolute wind and rain, we can tell you that. But at the moment, it's a very nice autumnal day here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Judith has been in this position before, back in 2019 when um, they were in Annapurna Trail, the final of the World Series. Maud Mathis, the incredible Maud Mathis, was leading the series. She, uh, she took a wrong turn. Judith storms through for the overall series win back in 2019. She'll know she's come from behind many times. In the Dolomis race in uh, 2021, she was in second place. Um, sorry, in 2019 as well, she was in second place behind Maud until the final downhill where she cut through the course and took two minutes out of more to win that race. That's how devastating Judith can be at the end of races on downhills. There's, there is a short sprint section on road towards the end. Will that be important? Who actually has the sprint left in them? Because at the moment, Judith is closing on Madalena. And so uh, with that final climb, and descent to come, it could be an extremely tight finish. Sophia knows that um, she's potentially, if it stays as it is, she's winning the overall series, but she won't know herself where Judith and, and Madalena are. So she has to try and claw back Judith. She's, she was a minute down last time we checked on Judith. I suspect she's falling behind now. Oh, and the descent commences for Madalena Floria. And look at her fly. Look at this pace. Ooh. Wow, that looks fun. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, she is absolutely storming down this trail. And you can see this is quite smooth underfoot. She's not going to be concerned about um, falling on this. She will be going full gas. Coming into this this final aid station in about two or three minutes, she'll have Damien, the uh, the Golden Trail Series runner, win, uh, runner, also from Romania, there giving her nutrition, giving her an update. Um, but at the moment, she'll be running blind to any information since the last checkpoint. She won't know where she is in relation to Judith um, since eight kilometers ago. No, sorry, five kilometers ago. That's 20 minutes she's been running blind. So uh, she will be running with fear in her heart, and rightly so, because Judith is tracking her down. And then we're currently seeing on screen the current overall leader in, in, the, uh, in the rankings, and that was Sophia Lackley, and she is about two minutes 30 behind second place, Judah. So it doesn't look like she'll be catching her, but Madalena Floria here, 
flying down to the finale of the Golden Trail World Series. It looks like a bit of fun, doesn't it? But I don't think she's going to be going to be thinking about fun right now. She's just going to be thinking about finishing in that first place as much as possible. She was so close in America, but she took a wrong turn and ended up third. Could this be her race? She did it in the prologue two days ago where she came out on top by 30 seconds in just an 8K race. Can she win here and make some history for herself and Romania but, in the Golden Trail? But there, there are battles all the way through this field. We've talked about how important it is to finish in the top 10 and the top five. At the moment, Miao Yao, if things stand, Marlin is in fourth, Miao Yao is in fifth overall, Madalena in third. But behind them, there is a battle between Sara Alonso, who currently lies in fourth in today's race, if she finishes in that position, she will jump into 10th overall ahead of Arna Gibson. So both of these runners only joined us late in the season at Pikes Peak. They haven't had three scoring races coming into these finals. So they are having to race their life, have the race of their life to try and qualify for next year in that top 10. It's going to be extremely close because right now, in our, the last time we had an update, Sara Alonso, Miao Yao, and Marlon Oso were all extremely close yeah. fighting for that fourth to sixth position. Extremely close. We love it. We've seen such an exceptional women's final here. The top three have been together since the beginning and then about five and a half minutes back. It's then Marlin Osa, Miao Yao and Sara Alonso, we believe. And uh, Sara will be wanting to get as high a place as possible to get in that top 10 for next year. And we're now with Sophia Lackley. She's had an unbelievable season. And we've seen, we've seen some funny this comments is Vincent, saying... Uh, this, is, so this is Vincent, the athlete manager from Salomon. Yeah, Salomon sponsored the whole series and our... Uh, Sophia's sponsor, he is there just to feed her information. You'll see he didn't give her any nutrition. You're not allowed to take any nutrition on the course except for at the aid station. But he is there to update her on the overall scores. So she will now know that Madalena is ahead. Judith is tracking her down. And if it stays the same, Sophia wins the overall series. But she'll also know that it's not a big gap between Judith and Madalena. And she knows as well as we do that Madalena has finished races worse than she started. So while she knows she's winning the series currently, she'll be very, very concerned that it might not be that way at the end of this race. Yeah, goodness me, what a final this is turning out to be. Squeaky bum time, indeed. We are nervous here in the commentary box, but loving every second and waiting to see. Well, there is that Madalena oh. Florian? Yeah, we've seen some comments also come through about it's a bad day to be a camera runner. Now, this, now this <laughs> bit is horrible. The, these stones are incredibly slippery, some of them very narrow. You'll see they, they will stop at some points. If you take these wrong, you will put out an ankle. Some of the, the stepping stones aren't actually wide enough for your whole foot so um we just hope that they can get through these without any issues um and then she'll be free to run afterwards we'll get a sense because she's had to slow down we might see in the top left of our corner if judith is appearing on screen or not no not yet not yet so it's it's still at least a minute lead approximately that she's got over judith in second place yeah what do we think is going on inside madalena's head just keep going keep going keep going um we've only got you know we haven't got that many minutes left of this race and it really would be the performance of her life to pull this out and oh gosh for her to do it would be something really special and, and we don't know madalena well enough um to know whether her psyche will be positive or negative right now because uh there's still a lot to go and time for them to to, to reel her in but if we look at the races she's done well in the times that she's run well, she had the prologue. That was only 37 minutes or so, 36 minutes. She did well in Mammoth Lakes, but that was an extremely fast run as well. It was it was a similar distance, but actually a lot more runnable than this. So this will be the longest race that she's been at the lead. Um, and, and that is significant because nutrition, as we've mentioned before, will be a factor. Judith has been tracking her down. It could be because of Judith's better technique, could be race management, but could be nutrition. So we're going to be trying to observe the running flow 
of Madalena and Judith to try and get a sense if, if, if they're telling us, I'm tired, I'm not running well. Um, and actually, even this bit here is quite precarious. Mm. It's quite rocky. These Just before this, this house with the red red roof it is quite rocky um you can run well here but you'll see she'll start to have to pick her line a little bit better but she's she's just flowing through that superbly i know but like, with trail running anything can happen an ankle could just go a rock could just slide out from underneath you it is risky it is precarious just like the lead of this race and you can see a camera uh, a, a, a bike there and all of this is being filmed by amazing runners amazing uh cyclists throughout the race to give us the best possible footage of any trail running event out there people out in full force with their cowbells and you can see how much how tricky it is for the for the bikers to get down there as well and she's steaming ahead isn't she look at this oh can she keep it going madalina madalina it's her second woman up there we can confirm she uh, is the first woman at the moment um, we've been told that judith has now increased her lead over Sophia to 2 minutes 30. It just shows you how much Judith and Madalena are pushing the pace. We've also had some updates on the course that um, Miao Yao is 8.20 back overall. Marlin is 5 seconds behind her and Zara has dropped down as we suspected into 6th place about 50 seconds behind them but both marlin and sara are covered in scrapes and have had a fall they're bloodied up we don't know what's happened we hope they're okay but that could certainly be impacting on their race but as it stands it looks like meow yao and marlin are in a battle for fourth and fifth place today and in the series incredible battle between them but we can see here our first and second ladies. Oh, and she has made it to ground level. Madalena Floria on the road, not far to go until the finish line. But the question is, can Judith on the down catch Madalena? She's looking behind there, you know, really hoping that she doesn't see anyone in her rear view mirror. She spits out, she's got, she knows she hasn't got far to go. She's looking calm, she's looking smooth. Has she got enough left in the tank to maintain this lead over Judith Wider and take this victory, which would probably mean that Madalena Floria comes in third overall of the Golden Trail World Series. Oh, now it's we're, exciting. We're in, we're in the press tent, able to see the part of the course near the finish. Damien, um, the Romanian runner, who is her support staff, he's here. He's got something in his hand. So they, they've clearly got nutrition ready for her and everyone is lined up to see. We've been told that it's now a minute gap between oh. Madeline and Judith. Judith is still closing. I'm going to take a split as they run past <laughs> our tent so we know the exact seconds because it really could come down to seconds. She has around two kilometers left to go, but there is a 120 meter little oh. short, sharp climb to go. Um, but yet she's taken off her buff. She, she clearly doesn't isn't worried about her nutrition from this point on, but There'll be a Judith will be able to hear the crowd when Madalena gets there. Madalena will be able to hear the crowd when Judith gets there. They'll be getting information the whole time. And this is Pep keeping up with her. This is Sarah Alonso. Oh, she's, she's through. She's passed us. She has just passed our tent. We have to say, David has been on his feet here. We've both been on our feet. This is so exciting. Madalena has just gone past us. And we've got, we're going to wait for the split to see how far Judith is behind. Madalena, if she keeps the lead, Judith stays in second and Sophia in third. It means that Sophia wins overall. But if Judith overtakes Madalena, then Judith will win the overall title. But Madalena, she'll be wanting to win this. She wants to prove it to the rest of the field. She wants it to prove to future sponsors that she is a really serious and epic trail runner. And uh, we're waiting for Judith to come through and any did, second. And did you see that? Her team, her team handed over and passed off two bottles to her. She dumped her nutrition belt. She took one bottle, which I think was water, one which was electrolyte, and uh, and then dumped and Judith through. Judith just passed Judith, 46 up. seconds. Ooh, 46 wow. seconds. She is closing far. This is incredible. And the pace that they came through, I, I don't know, She did she have time to pick up? I, I don't, well, she, she just had something in her mouth, so she's gonna give it. She just dropped something, she just picked up a bottle there. So, and she looks strong, doesn't she, Judith? Judith looks like she's got a lot left in the legs, to be honest. We were a bit worried about her legs, because she injured. She fell over in the prologue a couple wow. of days ago. 46 seconds, that means she's taken 35 seconds. Oh no, my mouse is going off, 25 seconds. Um, since the check we had at the top. 
Um, so the the impetus is on Judith. The question is, she has less than two kilometers to go until the finish. She's going to be needing to run 20 seconds faster per kilometer. It's possible. It's absolutely possible. Once you're tired, you can leak minutes. But this is not just the race for today. If Judith wins this race today, she wins the entire series. Incredible. David, we asked for an amazing women's final and we are getting it. Just 48 seconds between race leader Madalena Floria and then Judith Wider behind. And this we can now see is third woman, Sophia Lackley. She is a couple of minutes behind and she is going to be hoping with everything in her that Judith does not overtake Madalena because she wants that overall title. What a horrible position to be in. She knows now no matter what she does, there's nothing she can do to change the outcome of the overall series. If Madalena wins, Sophia wins the series. If Judith wins, Judith wins the series. But Sophia does not look um, that relaxed, I wouldn't say. She, a little bit of concern on her face there. Hopefully there's no pain or anything or, or no injury, but um, she's still running well, but the this overall title is no longer in her hands. Vincent, her team manager we saw at the top, would have told her that. But coming into this will be hurting now. When you're running this fast in races like this, you, oh wow, Judas, Judas stomping a bit. Um, it, it's very hard to tell quite how steep these uh, these climbs are. Yeah, and we, we didn't see Madalena on that section either, so we don't really know what she was looking like. But on the left, Sophia, we usually see at this point in the race, she's usually looking very calm, no emotion, but she looked pretty emotional there, didn't she? Yeah, she did. And, and as, as a lot of these athletes, when they are having to push their bodies so hard, you need to tell yourself these stories of I have to beat that person, they cannot catch me and like have so much of a focus on why you're doing it to overcome that pain and Sophia doesn't have that anymore, she's now running knowing no one's going to catch her, she's not going to catch the people ahead and the series is, she won't know until she crosses the finish line if Madalena has won her this series or not. So right now, America should be cheering for Romania. And but just there, that, that was one of her Salomon team cheering her on, Sophia, as she's coming through the town for onto the last little leg of this race. And this is Pet, this is Sarah Alonso's boyfriend, Pet, who uh, it was my boss, um, filming. And uh, you can see him doing a great, a great, and Sophia's just gone past this as well. Um, she didn't stop. She, she didn't, oh, she handed off nutrition bottles. She, she got didn't, something in her hand she there. She did pick up, okay, okay. Um, but she'll just wanting this, she'll be, want, oh, there we go. She'll be wanting this to be over as soon as possible now. Um, Whoa, what a race. Oh, no, we're, talk about the runs being tied, David. We're, we're going through it here in the commentary box, aren't we? Um, Sophia is four minutes behind, but we want to see what's going on in the front. We want to know what that lead is looking like, how Madalena is doing, how Judith is doing, because we've only got a few minutes left of this race. But th this is what we wanted from this from this race. We wanted battles all the way through. And the change in, in technicality and the up and downs by having the four laps has really allowed the race to unfold yeah. in different ways but I mean Madalena she's she's looking good I wouldn't say she's attacking right now she's looking like she's trying to float oh, float for it oh, oh gosh it's fine I mean that phew that, I, mean, I can't handle the stress David he almost went the wrong way but she ducks back under and we've got oh that looks deep huh? she's slightly hunched over there on the right hand side she looks in pain but we know there's not far to go but also the fact that that was a switch back that will allow Judith potentially to start seeing where oh, Madalena yeah. is and if Judith can get her in her sights psychologically that will be so so beneficial because she'll know that she has she can start to taste the victory so Madalena, if I was Madalena now, she won't know this, but she needs to start sprinting almost now yeah, to just keep seconds, her out David. of sight. If Judith gets her in a sight, it's advantage Judith. We've seen how recently that Madalena came through that point and wow, what an end to the season. And this is exactly what we wanted. 
Both of these runners joined late. Judith started with the Dolomir's run, Madalena with Sierras, and now they haven't had the opportunity to score as... No, as, no, 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 no. the wrong way. Uh, we, uh, we, we saw the bike cutting off Judith there. We hope that, the, we hope that she's gone the right way there. Oh, no. Um, it, no, I think that was Madalena almost going the wrong way. Oh, it's Madalena, was it? We hope that she's on track now. We've got that. I think that's Anna Kufa running with the camera in front of her. There's only about a 20 second gap between Madalena and, uh, and Judith. And the last thing we want is for one of these runners to go the wrong way on this final bit. We are really on the edge of our seat here. Can she maintain oh, this she's lead? She's good. She's good. Greg, Woo! race director, is opposite me. Um, he's, had, he's got even less hair on his head than he had before. But, <laughs> Significantly, there is only a 120 meter climb maximum. She's done a little bit of a down. This is the final climb she has to go before she, in fact, she's done the final climb. This is the downhill, less than a kilometer to go oh now, we believe, goodness. until the finish. Um, by getting slightly lost there, it might have helped with the adrenaline. It might have given that extra energy spike, potentially. Or it might have just sent her over the edge the other way, David. It <laughs> uh, might well have done. And she'll oh. start hearing the crowds quite soon. And we have Miao Yao, our fourth place woman here. We knew that Marlin Osso was behind her. Miao Yao is running for a top five here. She's got a 2.37 marathon time representing China. She She's looking the fastest runner out there right now. Yeah, Miao Yao's looking super comfortable. Oh my goodness, the, the hairs on my arms though, David, they are standing on edge and it's not because of the autumnal weather. This race has been something exceptional. I mean, Madalena, can she hold on? There's 1.5 kilometers left. We're talking a matter of a few minutes left to go. And, and she'll start to hear the crowds. She, she's been around these roads before. She will know this part of the course. And the more familiar the course is, you start to feel that home is coming. But wow, wow, Judith is super close. And she would have heard, she would have heard the cheers of people ahead of her and the, the energy from the audience starts to uh, so, so from from the crowd actually starts to be absorbed by these runners this is going to be super tight not just for the race but for the entire series there's got to be less than 30 seconds now between them looking uh, at them just and 10 seconds we've heard just 10 seconds between them are they going to go neck and neck is it going to be a sprint to the final oh my goodness we can't believe what we're seeing here at the Golden Trail World Series final ah wow and, and it looks like Judith is, is the more fluid runner right now but significantly Madalena has not been looking back which is showing confidence earlier she was but now she looks to be she's good this she is coming tight. into our final U-turn, uh, our, our final, our final U-turn of the course. She knows this part extremely well. She, she'll be looking at the distance. She's had a quick look back, so she'll know how to pace. But no, as, one's, no one's telling her where to go. As you can Is see, she going she, the right way. She, <laughs> no one. She, the fear she must have in her right now. She's been in this position before and got lost in Mammoth Lakes. It cost her the win to come third. She. Oh, Oh wow, thankfully, thankfully, this is the last straight before the turn. We're hoping the marshals will be a bit more vocal with her, um, but she'll be able to see that Judith isn't that close. Can we, can we see on Judith's screen? Madalena. Oh, sorry, I had to take a breath there, David. Thanks for taking over. Can we I'm so see nervous. Madalena from Judith's screen? Because being able to see her, Oh, I Where, don't... With the, there, the, there she is. She's coming into the last little bit of this. she's run this loop before. This is where she's staying. Her hotel is on the left. She's run this. She should know meter by meter now the way into the course. And she, as she'd have turned, she'd have given a little, book, a little look to the left to see if Judith was there. I think it's too big a lead now. It's it's maybe 30 seconds. I can't see Judith coming back from this, but oh, I don't, just know. don't I think, know. I think it's only about 15, 20 seconds, David. I mean, she's just going through the riverbeds there. There is less than a kilometer to go on this. Oh, I mean, significantly less now. This Woo! is, no, whoa. This is a riverbed. It's, ah, oh, they're so tired at this stage. And as soon as you're tired, 30% of your glycogen is used for your brain. You make decisions, you lose focus. She just needs to keep focus now. The bikes can't keep with her. She's running too quickly on this terrain. 
But Judas is now coming into the fight. We can hear the cheers. Madeline is looking back. She's got tears in her eyes. We will be seeing the finish line soon. She knows she's got the victory. She had her hands in her face. Overwhelmed oh by the... We can see her now. This is incredible. Oh, we're um, gonna, we're gonna maybe see Madalena Floria, who has had the season of her life. Wow. Sponsored athlete. She can see, she can feel she can Judith see behind she picked her. picked up the pace. That she came into the season an unknown. She led out in Sierra's and now and didn't have the nutrition oh. to win. She ended up seventh. She was first in Mammoth Lakes and ended up third. But in the final, the biggest performance of her career, unsponsored from Romania, oh. Madalena Faria wins the Golden Trail Series final. Incredible. Incredible scenes here in Italy. Tears coming from Madalena. What a race. What a victory what an athlete well done madalina floria from romania you are the golden trail world series final race champion and judith wider there coming in second wow 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 we weren't sure if judith was even going to be able to run properly today she took such a nasty fall during the prologue she had a stroke three years ago. She came back the following year and it was too soon. She had a major hip issue. She's returned to Golden Trail. She won in Dolomis. She won in Mammoth Lakes. Second here. This this will feel like redemp redemption right now. She's back oh. on the global scale, on the, on the global um, in the yeah. Global Series, performing back to her best. And look at that, Judith Wider, such a professional, such a wonderful person, getting Madalena on her feet, getting the crowd behind her. Madalena, enjoy this moment, enjoy it. Look, this is special. We're going to be seeing a lot more from this woman to come. We don't know if Sophia's going to be told the positions as she runs in. The, from the camera crew, it looks like they're not doubling back, so there's a chance Sophia's going to cross this line, not knowing if she's won the overall series series or not she'll be running she'll just be running on fumes right now but uh she knows she's got third place wrapped up but actually we're currently seeing the overall series winner running through this finish line but whether she knows it or not is a different story yeah, i mean and it was only a matter of a few seconds between madalina and judith which means that judith because she is only one place ahead of sophia here on the right hand side it means that she hasn't won overall and that we believe sophia who's about just running through on the right hand side she will ha be ending on the same amount of points as judith who's on your screen on the left hand side they'll end on the same amount of points overall in the rankings and therefore sophia because she's won more golden trail races overall throughout the season that she will be the golden trail series winner but today right now it's about this lady here madalina floria from romania we've spoken a lot today david that she is unsponsored i don't think that's going to be the case Come on, Salomon. Come on, Nike. Come on, Adidas. Get your checkbooks out to win the final in your first season when you've never done trail running before is absolutely sensational. Sensational. She will only improve her nutrition. She'll only improve her technicality. This is the beginning of a incredible future for this young girl um, next season she will be challenging for this title and the other runners will know that for sure but we are seeing Sophia Lockley coming home for a third place in the Golden Trail race today but she won't know it yet first overall in the series yeah and she came second overall in the series last year she's going one better the young american also dual national she's also norwegian which is where she resides at the moment she's a skier as well we're part of the olympic ski team and such an athlete such a great addition to this series and these three what a race they've given us we thought the women's race would be something special today and it absolutely has not disappointed now the battles are still happening behind we've just had an update of of the uh, the positions it looks like um meow meow is pulling a, a head of marlin that's the battle for fourth and fifth and sara alonso is just behind them if it currently stays as it in fact sophia's just run past our tent you'll be seeing that shortly she's coming in to the the finish line now she finished in second last year overall in the series she turned up at mont blanc and destroyed the field despite covid she came second in the dolomis run an incredible performance she backed it up by winning sierra's and now the oldest trail race in europe went to pikes peak she won that and here she is
Third today, but first overall in the series. An incredible performance by Sophia Lockley. Oh, and look at this sportswomanship for you. Judith giving Sophia a big hug there, even though, oh, Sophia takes the win overall. Madalena, look at these three athletes. Oh, and Judith moving Madalena to the middle there so that she can take that top spot. And you can just feel the emotion. I feel emotional now looking at them. Look, this means so much to Madalena, who almost almost did it in america but she didn't quite because she went the wrong way on the course and today it's her day and as well as this lady here in the red vest sophia lackley what a season she's had three wins out of three earlier on i the think she just found out she's just found out she's won the series what a performance so much hard work going into this and uh i think the relief has finally crossed her face she didn't want to ask Judith, so uh Wow, and, and, and we're, we're seeing now that uh, Miao Yao has gone past. The battle for fourth and fifth is still on, and it's going to be tight as these top three have been. But we're now, this is, this is Sara Alonso, who is currently lying, we think, in sixth place in today's race, but that will move her into the, the top 10 for the first time. Miao Yao from China is coming in to the town. She, um, she's had some fantastic races so far this season, but has, has started off too quickly. Even though she came third, um, uh, sorry, second or third in um, Mont Blanc, I would say if she was to come fourth today, that would be her best performance of the season so far. She didn't start off too fast. Um, and and to, to, to run down Marlin and Sara on the technical sections was really, really impressive. We do know that we, uh, we're likely to be going to Asia next year for the series. And seeing the Aoyao race on home, home turf is going to be oh, exciting to see. It'll be something special. I mean, the Golden Trail World Series, it's been unbelievable this year. These female athletes are something else. We've loved it. We have been with you throughout. Uh, David Hellard, the absolute trail running expert that you are, and myself, Jess Rogers, we've loved it. We've loved bringing you the action. We've loved bringing you the drama, the best trail running series out there, the best trail races, the best athletes, and the most incredible locations and stories coming out of this. Now, Sara is running knowing that she needs to maintain this position to get 10th overall in the series. That's important because if you come top 10, everything is then sponsored for next year. You get full support in these races. But that looks like it's Ayana. Um, is, that a, is that Marlin and Ayana locked in a battle? Both Bass runners as well. Um, Ayana coming top three in Zagama, an incredible performance. And fourth, just behind, uh, sorry, third just behind Miao Yao in uh, Mont Blanc earlier this season. But Miao Yao has paced this to perfection. A fourth woman today, and she is not slowing down. No, she's looked so smooth, hasn't she? And like we said that before, she was gone out um, way too fast in previous. And this is Marlon Osa on our screen, only 20 years old from Spain. Very good performance, and she'll she'll be finished well overall. Someone we haven't seen is Sylvia Nordskar, who started well, and she was actually fourth in the overall rankings. But we think she's quite far down the pack. We hope she's okay, but she's going to really want to finish fairly in a good position because yeah. she wants to be in that top ten overall. She It'd absolutely be such a needs shame. this point. I, I know top five was uh, she she turned professional this year. She got married um, in November last year. She's an accountant from Norway and, and, and decided to focus on going professional this year and really concentrating on her training and, and she really has stepped up her performances but Marlin Osser she came to the national series finals last year and won the overall series finals at the age of 19 she's now 20 which is, is young for a runner but incredibly young for a trail runner to be performing at this level she started in third place today but she knew that she was going to be caught so to come in uh, in fourth position overall um, in the series at the age of 20 is a phenomenal performance. And you can see how tight they are running here, all the camera runners as well. I hope they didn't crowd them out too much. But um, we're seeing the runners get very close. Miao Yao will just be turning the corner soon. And here she is, oh. Miao Yao. What a performance. She's uh, done incredibly well at longer races in the past at OCC and the UTMB weekend. But she, 
she didn't get a chance to train for trail during COVID while she's in China. She increased her pace and has come out with golden trail in mind this season. Yeah. A great performance to come forth today. Yeah, and she's got a big smile on her face. Look at this. Is this a bit of a battle here going on between Sara Alonso and... And is that, is that Julia Font on her shoulder? Yeah. Also from Spain, Julia's been top 10 throughout this season. But um, they, they had a battle in Pikes Peak with Sara one, but so Marlin has put clear distance between them now. She'll be happy with this. She, the last two days after the prologue, she really didn't... She wasn't confident she was going to be able to finish this race oh. because of um, because of cramp. So to come in today carrying the weight of the world and still to perform at this level at the age of 20 is incredible. What a performance for her. Oh, and, and look at the emotion as she comes over the line. You can feel it. You can see what it means to her to finish. And, and teammate there uh, from Salomon Racing as well, Sophia, giving her a hug. She did it. Marlonosa, you finished the Golden Trail. says you've got a great overall ranking. And uh, you've had a really great race today. So the battle is still on between, between Sara and Julia. Um, they, the same battle happened in Pikes Peak. Sara beat her then. Uh, Julia comes into this. She was third in Transvolcania Ultramarathon, um, 48k earlier this year. She's got the distance in her leg. This is Elise Ponset behind, who's also running for a top 10 position. But it looks like... Julia is slightly ahead of her here. I would back Sara in a sprint Ooh, finish. Well, is it going to come down? Oh, I she don't know like that to be true, back, but though. I think Julia knows that as well, right? <laughs> she's upping the pace here. <laughs> indeed, indeed. This women's final has been oh, something, something beyond our dreams. It really has been epic and is showcasing trail running its absolute best. Sara Alonso, who only came back from injury this year, but that gap is widening. Maybe the gap she's is cramping. Oh, they just run past us here. Yeah, Sara's just run past as she's grimacing pain in her face we're just going to quickly check what this means for the overall score because it was incredibly close for the top 10 for Sarah um, this shouldn't affect the overall position she should still be um, ahead of Alna Gibson on um, in 11th place so we think this means even though she's dropped back a place it should mean still Sarah Alonso has come started the race the season late and still come top 10 absolutely Oof. fantastic given her pre-season injuries yeah. and, and lack of training she's been able to do We're so gonna far wait this for season absolute confirmation uh, she came into the overall rankings into this race in 19th place she needs to be in that top 10 to guarantee to be on the tour next year so we're going to wait for confirmation to see if she's done it and it but looks like she has had a fall there is that is that blood on her arm yeah i think they had um, a scrape earlier on um, but goodness me, very good that we didn't see any huge tumbles in this because it's such a complex course and there's room for so much error. But we're, we're expecting to see uh, potentially Elise Ponset coming through soon, um, who is one of the fastest downhill runners in the world to finish. Here is this Elise Ponset, also in the top 10 overall. We believe this, fit, this means that Miao yeah. ends up in fifth overall and Elise Ponset representing Fa France in sixth and representing Millet. Um, the brand. So Julia Julia Font is in seventh overall, uh, we believe, although potentially would have jumped to sixth depending on her position next to Elise. Yeah, and Elise looked very happy there crossing the finish line, still looks strong. Um, the French lady, oh, they're just, it's such a great atmosphere at the Golden Chelsea. Italy are out in force today, and it's been such incredible atmosphere and amazing weather as well we've had for this women's finale. Tomorrow it's the men's finale, it is the same course. Um, and we will see them battle it out over extremely, oh, extremely similar terrain. And uh, there are going to be battles galore tomorrow as well. The uh, all of the positions could change, um, but we're going to be we're going to do a quick recap to show you just how great this what this race was to see the scenery. But this is our winner, Madalena. She already made a big sensation at the prologue, winning the prologue, ladies and gentlemen, Madalena. Floria, let's revisit the race because you came into the final in ninth place overall. Then you ran the prologue, you won the prologue, you were in fifth place. You won today the final. Do you know in which place you are? You're in third place. Ah, oh, look at that. Delighted she's in third place so, overall. So I just want to ask, how did the race go and when did you choose to go away? Uh, con uh, thank you. Congrats for Jude on Sofia Laupi. 
And now it's time for a uh, uh, thank you for my family or my daughter or my boyfriend or my friends to support me. And I don't have words now, but uh, just I'm so happy. I don't know, it's real again. I'm win today. <laughs> So you secured the victory, and we know that after the U.S., you stayed at altitude to train. So do you think that helped you? Did you feel the benefits during the race? Yes, uh, I think uh, after uh, the USA, I go to in Romania in my mountain to prepare this race. And now I think give me a power to win on here, the boat race. Very, 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 very happy. And we are very happy for you as well. So we knew you were very strong, and you, as you said, you had the power. But you, we also re saw you today run downhill, and you were extremely strong, extremely fast on technical. Is this something you worked on? In my mind, was the boat race uh, go too fast and win the game again. Uh, in my mind, repeat again, no frame, no frame, no frame, go too fast. <laughs> this word, it's, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, she is out of words, but definitely not out of juice. Madalena Floria won today after already winning the prologue, and the secret is, just don't be afraid and go as hard as you can. Madalena, congratulations. We're going to let you go recover and fully enjoy this victory. Congratulations again. And once again, you are now third in the overall ring classification of the Gold Trailers this year. Maybe the last question is, do we see you next year? Yes. Now I need to go to holiday and recover and see you next week. Uh, see you next year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madalena. All right. Wow, wow, wow. Now she needs a holiday. Gosh, what a performance this last couple of days. The finale of her dreams, winning the prologue, winning the finale, and then third overall in the Golden Trail World Series, Madalena Flora from Romania. What a heroine. Now let's see what happened in this race. Here we are at the beginning. The the two rivals at the top of the series having a little chat as they started. We knew it'd start fast. What we weren't sure was whether Madalena was going to commit early, knowing she had the faster flat space, a uh, flat space uh, pace. But Sophia Lockley actually took it out. She was committing today, knowing that if Judith beat her, that she could potentially lose the whole series. On that first climb, Judith then took the lead, and uh, it, it showed the maturity that Madalena had to not attack too early. She's not, at, she's not as used to pacing these longer races, and so she sat back, but that group of three remains on the first climb and down this, da this downhill. We have Sylvia Norska there and, Sa and Sara Alonso in fourth and fifth, but e uh, Ifan Dongen from Switzerland from the National Series, she was performing incredibly well in this first third of the race, up in fourth place, someone we hadn't seen before, and we hope that she holds on to top 10 overall because uh, she's clearly got some good gas in her lungs. Um, now, this is the first downhill, and during this stage, you could see that Judith again was pushing the pace, trying to create a bit of a gap between them. Um, but that didn't last. It wasn't long until M Madalena decided to actually use her speed and try and put a gap in between her and Sophia and uh, all three of them locked together still coming up to the end of our our first big big lap the battle behind them was still happening Sara Alonso only joined us halfway through this series and knew that she had to perform well today to get back into the top 10 overall Coming through then at the end of the first lap, Madalena had then created a bit of a lead over the chasing pack, but only around 20 to 30 seconds, which isn't any was it was it a, isn't a huge amount amount in races this long. Malinosa running with her compatriot, both Basque runners, also battling to try and ensure that she had fifth overall in the series. The big question here though was whether Madalena, Madalena could run these technical trails as aggressively as Judith. It's something she's not used to, and we saw on the downhill of that second loop 
that she, as she said in that interview, was, wasn't allowing fear to overwhelm her senses and just committing fully to that downhill. By this stage, Judith had built a, a good commanding lead over Sophia. So Madalena came through to win her first overall race of the series, an incredible performance, an unsponsored athlete. Judith takes second today and second overall in the series, coming joint on points with Sophia. But because Sophia's won three races before, she came in in third place, not realizing that was enough to win the overall series. You can see the, the slight disappointment there, but then she, bat she, she discovers later that she's actually won the overall series. We wanted it to be separate races so that you could see the skill and the ability on offer today. The women's race certainly didn't disappoint in that regard. The men's race is tomorrow, the same course where once again, all 10 places in the top 10 are up for grabs. Let's see what this does to our, our top 10 overall. Our top 10 have now finished. Yeah, so this is the first tent across the finish line here in Il Golfo de Sola. It was Monica Floria who took the win, Judith Wider second, Sophia Luckley in third. Fourth for China, Yao Miao. Fifth, we had Marlin Osa. And sixth, Julia Font. Seventh, Sarah Alonso. Eighth, Elise Ponset. Ninth, Alice Gaggi. And tenth, a national series runner was Eve van Dongen from Sweden. Uh, what? A top 10 that is. What a race it's been. What a season it's been. And uh, we're hoping we can see what that does to the overall rankings. Although it's going to take quite a bit of quick time, uh, typing from uh, from our team. So we're not sure we're seeing that. But here we are, Judith. Um, I mean, what a return to racing this year. She had second in the World Champs. She won the Dolomis Run. She won in, won in Mammoth Lakes. And uh, she's doing all of this while she's still got two young children two that children, she's looking after. I know. We love it on the Golden Trail World Series. Lots of mothers who come back after having children are still able to race at this elite level. It really is exceptional. And another thing I love about the Golden Trail World Series, the age of these runners, is, it can be quite varied. You've got 20-year-old runners. You've got 40-year-old runners. Trail running can, you can really sustain it um, when you're older as well. And it's just incredible to see athletes of, you know, 20 years difference competing alongside each other. Absolutely. And, and, and going into next year, looking at next year's series, we have a new superstar. But also Judith will come back um, and I'm sure will actually take her performance up to a, another level as well. Um, we've seen with Sophia, she's been learning how to She's an Olympic skier, how to balance skiing with, um, with trail and she'll only improve in, in ensuring that her legs are more battle ready for this season. And so uh, next year could be even better than this year, but I, I think we're going to be interviewing shortly one of the other finishes just to, uh, to hear what happened in, in their experience. But, but what, a, what a place Italy's been. Um, yes, it's the first time we've had a, a Golden Trail World Series in this region. We are in North Italy and four municipalities have come together of Bergeggi, Noli, Sportono and Vesi Portio to host this today. Really, really popular place in the summer, but also got these amazing trails for running, mountain biking and hiking alike. And what a place it's been, super welcoming. We've loved being here for the last few days for Eurosport for the Golden Trail World Series. It's the men's finale tomorrow and it's going to be another epic race. Just look at that Mediterranean sea glistening. Hasn't been weather like this, I can tell you that for the last few days, but it really has put on a show today. And we, we weren't sure what the new format was going to be like, how, how successful that would work, but actually we've seen that it really created battles throughout the top 10 and, um, and also allowed the camera runners and cyclists to, to get in, in, in amongst the athletes repeatedly without being having to be uh, stuck up the side of a mountain but uh, so looking looking ahead to tomorrow you know Remy Bonet leads the series all right ladies and gentlemen with uh, Judy Vider second place today for prologue. 15 uh, very small seconds uh, we're going to revisit the, the race now quickly with, uh, you knew Vida, who from the strategic point of view that you needed to be ahead of Sophia of and have one person Although in between the camera uh, to yet. take so the overall win we're just if we can and we're like ah is that going to happen is it going to happen and towards the end uh, we followed we you, you know, all, from, uh, all the way, and we listen, saw the gap the going from one minute to 48, people, uh, to 48 uh, seconds you know, to 25 up. seconds and into 15 seconds on the finish line. How did this play out for you, and uh, uh, how did you manage now. to get with, uh, with Medellin? So yeah, I'm really happy with my race overall, even though in the end it felt a bit sour 
since I really fight it hard. I ran a wrong turn in the end, just like some 200 meters before the finish. I lost about 10 to 15 seconds there. So yeah, I was really feeling confident to make that gap. In the end, it wasn't. So the Florea was just running amazing through the whole course. I felt like I had to take it back a little bit after my fall two days ago. And I wasn't sure if I would be able to hold on all these 26 kilometers. But yeah, I mean, it was just a fight and I tried. I had nothing to lose. And um, yeah, today it's like that. Sophia was better in the end, um, but I can be really proud of myself and my season. Uh, we all very proud of you indeed uh, for what you did because you were essentially the only one able to keep up with Madalina the whole time. Uh, when she put the hammer down, like Sofia dropped back and everybody was really far behind. Uh, so we were hoping maybe for a repeat of 2019. Didn't happen, uh, but you're just coming back this year showing you're extremely strong. Two wins this season. Do we see you next year, Judith? I haven't actually planned my year yet. Uh, I will go back home, take it easy, try to qualify for OCC as well, and then I will see how the program looks like of the Golden. I hope there will not be too many races on the Golden, and then, yeah, for sure, I would love to be back. It's always nice, it's a perfect format, and uh, it brings the sport forward, and that's what I like. And we're certainly looking forward to having you back. Ladies and gentlemen, second place today at the Golden Trail Series final, Judith Video. thank you very much. And, and you can you can hear there she was she, she clearly had the prologue and the and the injury in the back of her mind and you, you do wonder whether just that slight hesitation um, would have potentially slowed her down on some of those downhills but but what a battle that was at the finish then. oh goodness me I know and just what Judah said there like she hasn't planned her, her races for next year but she loves the golden trail and she thinks it's the perfect type of racing and elevating the sport and that's what we're all here for absolutely and, and if you're watching at home and haven't done trail running before burn your road shoes <laughs> get some trail shoes it's so much more fun those downhills are so excited to do but this has been the golden trail world series we're back tomorrow for the men's final and it is going to be a battle royale we'll see you there And look at that Mediterranean seat. David, are we going to go for a dip after this? I mean, I think some of the runners are going to be in there cooling off their legs, aren't they? Absolutely, although it, it is end of season, so um, some of them will be thinking no more, no more thinking about sports too much. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if a few of them are dipping in to get that, that cold water on there. We're hoping to be able to catch up with Sophia as well, who is the, the overall winner. Um, I mean, for you, what, what does... What was the highlight for you today or, or what surprised you about, about today's race? Goodness, I think how close it was. I really loved the battle for first, second and third, but then also fourth, fifth and sixth. I just think that th this series and this finale has meant that the competitiveness of the runners can really come to the forefront and they're all so close. And the format that we had today of the, of the various loops I think was really great for racing, made it a really great spectacle. And I just loved that little battle between Judith and Madalena and for the overall rankings at the end. It really had us and me on the edge of my seat. I mean, you saw me, I was, I was sweating. I was, oh gosh, it was scary, wasn't it, David? Yeah, and, and just thinking about tomorrow already, we, we had our time trial and uh, Remy did not win it. No, El Hussein, the flying camel returns. So that is going to be a battle as well to see who can win, not just the race, but the overall title. Uh, yeah, and it really is going to be a battle tomorrow. Uh, and I've loved having it a separate female and male so final important. here. So important um, to have, uh, you know, with Golden Trail, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's the quality through and through. Because All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sophia Lockley, third place today. But, and we're but about to go maintain to the overall win in the Golden Trail Series this year. Uh, we talked a lot this season, and you said that the massive change compared to last season was strategy. You chose to make... A, like a, to have a slower time at Pike Speak, for example, just to secure the win. You know that it's all about scoring points. You have three wins, so full house before coming in here. However, we knew that there was a scenario where Judith could pass you and it meant that she needed to be ahead of you and leave one person in between. So I think you knew that going into it. And so how did the race play it out for you and how did you manage it? I mean, I definitely thought I started conservative and decided that I was just going to race with Judith and Madalena and then hopefully conserve enough energy to like break away. Didn't really go to plan. 
I was hurt. Like, I felt pretty good on the first lap, and then I just, it was over. I, this, I think, was the toughest race of the, like, I, it was definitely not great, and I was super worried. Like, in the second lap, I was like, I feel like I need to drop out right now, and I was pretty terrified because at that point, I knew Madalena was in first, but, like, it was such a, so tight between her and Judith, and then after the two of them dropped me, I was just like, this is a mystery, because I had no idea if Judith was had passed Madalena, so, like, basically until the finish line, I was like, I'm dead. Hopefully, Madalena just is firing today and that was basically like strategy went out the door and I was just kind of like well I hope it goes in my favor and it obviously did it would have been fun to go out on a win but I think that might have been too much ass with like I had a pretty perfect season leading up into this and so maybe makes sense that I'm a little bit tired now yeah and you were saying that before it's just like it's been a long season I'm ready to be done uh, but nonetheless, like you had a really fantastic race. Like we were following you as well, and you were moving. Like you, you hadn't. Like there's nothing to take away from your performance today. Just Madalena was just on another planet, and but Judith was closing in on her. And so we, when we were following you, we're like, well, she's going hard, but the the the, the overall ranking is out of your hands because, as you said, it was happening ahead. And when Judy was closing into onto Madalena, you know, she finished only 15 seconds back. 15 seconds. <laughs> so it, it is ridiculous that after a whole season and, and the, the amount of points, like it would be down to 15 seconds uh, for you to eventually take the win. So uh, it's been a long season. You're going to transition into, uh, or already transition into uh, cross country skiing. What's the plan for next year? I mean, uh, I'll be back for Golden for sure. I think, I mean, I'm obviously going to try to win again, maybe win on a. It's it, like with the, how this rules work. Technically, me and Judith tied, so maybe like more of a like official win. But I mean, obviously, I'm gonna take this. I'm super, super happy with that. But I want to come back for sure. Maybe do some races that I didn't do this year. Um, but yeah, that's. I don't really think too far in advance right now. I got to think about skiing. Um, but yeah, I'll be back. And uh, if you think like really short term, this is a beer mile tonight. Oh God, I hope it's tomorrow night though. Sure, it is tomorrow night. My bad. You got one day to recover. You'll be fine. But yeah. Oh, beer mile. That's calling my name. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Third place today and the overall champion in the 2023 Gold Trail World Series, Sophia Lockley. A deserved winner as well. The way she came out at Mont Blanc, her first ever marathon, and the distance between her and anyone else there, she, she, she was clearly showed her intent to, to win this overall series. I do wonder next year though, she is a, a dual athlete, but I don't know if she's going to be able to perform at this level doing both sports in the future because every year it keeps on stepping up and improving and um, in a, uh, Madeline is going to improve, Maud may be back, Ninka mm. may be back, um, and, and who knows how good Marlin and Miaoya will be by then. So um, it, it's quite a hard choice. Do you go full full trail um when the olympics is on the other side but uh wow yeah. what a race this has been well what a race has been what a season has been what a season next year is going to be i'm already excited it's october now we expect to be seeing the first golden trail world series events in april next year uh david hellard it's been an absolute pleasure commentating alongside you i've been jess rogers we've loved it thanks for bringing me along for the ride Thank you, uh, Eurosport, for having us. It's, uh, it's been epic, and we cannot wait to bring you more drama of the Golden Trail World Series with the men's finale tomorrow here in Italy. Thanks for watching. We'll be back. And that is trail running.